Hello everybody and welcome to Fairy Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's guide, how you can watch the Curry Cup. A lot of people um, around the world are trying to sort of find various different ways to watch the oldest competition in the world. And today we're going to be showing you how you can watch that from anywhere in the world with the use of ExpressVPN and Flow Rugby. Um, before we do that, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So if you're in South Africa, it's being shown on Supersport, um, but it is on Supersport Premium, which means you'll have to pay a thousand rand a month uh, to be able to watch all the action. And uh, obviously, it's also a 12-month subscription. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is going to be showing you how you can watch something called uh, Flow Rugby or using Flow Rugby. Now, the good thing with Flow Rugby is I, I really actually recommend just getting it, to be honest, um, and trying to get a year subscription as well because it's got so many different competitions. Uh, for example, you know, if you look at this weekend, um, it's showing all the Super Rugby. It's showing um, the Carry Cup. It's showing the uh, Six Nations... Um, Junior game stuff like that. It's got the Champions Cup. It's got the top 14. It's got the Premiership. There's so many various competitions it does cover. Um, so what you're going to do, first of all, is that you need to get yourself a VPN because it's only available in the United States. Uh, so you're going to go get your VPN, uh, which is a virtual private network, and you're going to uh, install it. If you, if you get a 12-month subscription, by the way, you can get an extra three months free um, for favorite sports supporters. Uh, so then this is what it looks like. You use the three dots on the right over here to go to the USA, and you're going to turn that on. And then you're going to go to Flow Rugby. Once again, it is in the description. And you can get a monthly account for about, I think it's about $30. Or so I think you can get a free trial as well for about a week. Or you can get the annual subscription. And uh, it looks a little bit like, well, this is just this is just the, the, the schedule for the weekend. And uh, as you can see, uh, going into this coming weekend, uh, we've got uh, Bulls versus Pumas there, Pumas versus Lions, um, Bulls versus, that was last week, so Bulls versus Western Province, all the Super Rugby and stuff like that, all involved this week. There's also lots of in, other international um, rugby happening, um, you know, the likes of um, Netherlands versus Germany and stuff like that, all available on Flow Rugby. Uh, so it's a really, really cool subscription to have, and it has all the Curry Cup games on it. Uh, so you can either get yourself a monthly subscription, a uh, month-to-month -month subscription, or you can get a year subscription. Chance I think will also have, the, should have the World Cup as well, so, uh, you know, it's got a lot of different uh, tournaments, and uh, it's yeah, one of the best ways to sort of watch rugby. Um, as I said, it's got the URC, it's got the EPCR Challenge Cup, Champions Cup, the Top 14. Um, so lots of very good competitions that they do have. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, uh, but otherwise, we've got a step-by-step -step guide in the description. Just follow that and you can watch all the Curry Cup action, which we will be live for some this weekend as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys there. And we are live. Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. It is EPCR Pool Draw Day, which means that uh, in the next 35 minutes, the pool, maybe the next sort of 40 minutes, the pools for the 2023-2024 uh, Champions Cup and Challenge Cup will take place. And uh, we're going to take you through it. We're going to be doing a live update. We're going to be doing live uh, sort of pools over here so you can see exactly what's plotting and you can find out where your team is is going to be drawn again. So, two draws. First of all, will be the Champions Cup, and uh, it's a good time to recap the, the format. Um, and we'll do that in a little bit, if you guys have missed it. Um, but yeah, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Let me know who your team is, what sort of teams you're looking to try and um, that you're supporting, for example, and uh, you know what 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 teams would you, would you like to draw yourself again? Um, so yeah, as I said, it starts the first draw starts in about five minutes, which is the Champions Cup draw, and uh, that will be followed by the Challenge Cup draw about 20 minutes after uh, that begins. So, uh, yeah, and let's settle in really. Um, but uh, before the draw does start, and I think it's about to begin, just trying to make sure I can get it working on my PC over here. And uh, we're gonna go through the format, explain exactly how it works. Uh, four pools of six for the Champions Cup, three pools of six for the Challenge Cup, and um. Uh, a, a very a, a different format to uh, what we had this past season, which just didn't really work, if we're being brutally honest. So uh, they have changed it. They have changed it. And uh, yeah, now we're going to move into to a different format. And hopefully it will, uh, with it will come a, a really exciting and action-packed tournament. It's, uh, and if my... Uh, if EPCR TV could start working, that would be wonderful.
So I take it all back. It's the other way around, I think, actually. I think it is the... Yeah, so the Challenge Cup draw will take first. We'll play, take uh, place first, followed by the Challenge Cup. I mean, the Champions Cup. So Challenge Cup first. Uh, and the best for last, in theory. And, uh, yeah, that should get underway in the next few minutes. And as I said, we will be having a, uh, a live... Um... Oh, there we go. It's very dramatic music. Uh, yeah, so the draw will be starting very shortly. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you updated with all that's happening there on the graphic and stuff like that. Right, let's go through the format, shall we? Because it has changed quite a lot um, from the past season, which just didn't really work, did it? Um, and it gets a bit complicated. And uh, so, yeah, it's probably pretty, probably a good idea to, to go through um, exactly how it's going to happen. Okay, so this is how it's going to happen. So, this is, uh, so first of all, it is we look at the champ Champions Cup. Uh, there will be four pools of six teams. Pool one, pool two, pool three, and pool four. Uh, maybe we should change our names to, to pool one. We can do that as we go. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, the key principles, um, it's each pool will contain two clubs from each of the leagues. Clubs from the same URC Shield cannot be in the same pool. So for example, the Irish teams can't be in the same uh, pool. The South African teams can't be in the same pool. Uh, for example, there will be no matches, however, between clubs from the same league. So in order to create the fixture, the club will play four matches against four different clubs who are not from the league that they are in. Um, so that is so. So yeah. So you will, so for example, the second teams will not play against any other URC sides uh, in the group stages. Um, it will only uh, happen in the playoffs uh, at the very earliest. So yeah, we don't have to worry too much about that. Um, and then we go for the purpose of the draw. It says the clubs will be divided into two tiers: tier one and tier two. Tier one will be La Rochelle, Saracens, Munster, as well as uh, Toulouse, uh, who obviously won the, uh, uh, the 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 top fourteen. So it's the three um, winners of each league plus the overall winners of the current winners of the Champions Cup. If it's the same, um, if the Champions Cup winner, for example, is uh, also the winner of their domestic one, then the, whoever the domestic runner-up is. Gets the, the the top tier spot there. Actually, no, the finalists from the from the um the Champions Cup get that uh, that extra spot in tier one. Um, so to start the process, the four tier one clubs will be drawn in the first club out of the drum pool going to pool one, the second club out of the drum pool going to pool two, the third club out of the drum pool into pool three, and so and so. So the first things first, we will be um, as I said, they'll be starting with the um the tier one to sort of decide which which pools they're going to go to and then not draw from the rest. Um, so then the remaining 20 clubs from the, in the Champions Cup in the tier two will then be drawn and allocated to the pools. If a club cannot be drawn to a pool in accordance, while well, key principle, the club will be allocated to the next available pool. The process will then restart at the pool into which the initial club could not be drawn. Um, the, there will be 18 clubs in the Challenge Cup. Uh, eight from the URC, six from the top 14, two from the Premiership, and two invited clubs, which will be announced shortly. Um, and uh, each pool contains two top 14 clubs. Clubs from the same URC shield, same principle, cannot be in the same pool. No South African teams, South Sharks and Lions can't be in the same pool. And uh, same with the Welsh teams, as well as the Italian teams. Uh, two Premiership clubs and the two invited um, will also be drawn and allocated to different pools. Clubs will play four different opponents, home or away, during the pool stage with the same league matches being kept to a minimum and only impacting clubs from the URC. To start the process, all 18 clubs will be placed in the drum, and any three balls will be drawn separately, with the first club out of the drum going to pool 1, pool 2, pool 3. Uh, they'll continue in an open basis, with the next club out of the drum going to pool 1, pool 2, and so on, um, until all clubs are drawn and allocated, providing the key principles are adhered to. If a club cannot be drawn to a pool, they will go into the next available pool, the process then restarts, etc., etc. Um, so that is the... What is going to happen in in a nutshell, really? Um, if you have any questions, put them down in the in the comments, and I will try and answer them. Um, but apart from that, uh, as I said, in theory, we should be getting going very soon. Um, this you can see. I mean, why is it whenever like these these people do? What are they actually showing? And and they have to. They, they you know they do it on their own specific platform. You know, so they can get all the exclusive viewers. And unfortunately, it just doesn't work. I mean, it's been buffering now for ages. 
But it's very frustrating. But in theory, we have begun. Um, and we have begun. There we go. Slowly but surely, we're going to get there. Oh, it's in Italian. I mean, French at the moment, so I can't uh, can't translate. But ugh, it's just still baffling. It's just so useless. Why are all internal things always so bad? Just do it on YouTube. Like, stop trying to have this fancy, you know, our own system. You know, we're going to, you know, put it into our, you know, our own little platform, which never works. Following a spectacular and record-breaking 2022 yeah, 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 yeah. EPCR. Shut up. So we're going to have to, might, might be a couple of seconds delayed. Yeah, this is a bit of an on start here. So we have to wait on the updates. Um, but yeah, we should be hopefully getting the Challenge Cup draw underway very, very shortly. Dave says uh, he's pointing shark teeth in the same league, don't play each other in the Cups. Yep, so they won't play well. They can in the Challenge Cup. They're trying to avoid it, but in theory, they, they can. Uh, what's my prediction for the Stormers pool? I, I don't know, to be honest. There's so many teams that they can be drawn against. Um, you know, can't be drawn against the Bulls. That's about it, really. Um, obviously, it depends on sort of which pool they're going in terms of the tiers and stuff like that. Um, but I've got no idea, to be perfectly honest. This is just not working. Right, let's see. I'm trying to see if I can get it working on my phone. This is just coming and going, unfortunately. There is an app. Things always tend to work better on an app. Do do. I'm going to go on my phone as well. A little bit of a backup. Do, 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 do. Busy watching Kids and Colby rip shit up. Da, 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 da. Nope, it's just as bad on the phone as it is on the PC. Let me just put it on YouTube, people. It's not hard. It's not hard, and I've restarted. We've completely restarted, yeah. This is, this is going well. Uh, if anybody else is watching on the official EPCR TV, let me know if you're having any issues. Uh, I'm having all the issues here. I mean, it literally plays for two seconds and then buffers. Let's see if we try and put ourselves in Europe. Maybe it's usually a VPN. Let's see if I'll... Uh... Right, I think we're back. I think we went to arm tape already, but I think we should be back. And this does seem to work a bit better. Actually, touch wood. Good old experience VPN clutching up. So if you have any issues, try VPN apparently. Right, here we go. We're about to get underway here. They're busy looking through the different teams and stuff like that before we start allocating people. So we're going to get it ready to update. Pool one in the Challenge Cup. Yeah, so last the Newcastle, the two uh, qualifiers from the Premiership. Ah, oh, they haven't named them. I was really hoping they were going to name them. Ah, oh, they're busy going through the principles and stuff like that. So we're still probably going to take another minute or two before the draw actually starts. Uh, 
So what are, what sort of teams do we do we want to see each other play against each other? I mean, for example, we could have Stormers taking on Tulu, we could have Bulls taking on a a uh, Leicester Tigers or Saracens, for example. Kind of these cool teams. The problem is if you when you get drawn against top fourteen side, even if it's a South African game, you're not you're not going to see your top players. <laughs> they don't send them out here. So if you do get Tulu, you're not going to be playing against uh, Remain Intermac and Anton Dupont and the likes, unfortunately. You get to the same finals, for example, there's a chance, but uh, yeah, they generally just only kind of play the home game. <laughs> Come on, let's going, let's get going. All right, here we go. All right, what have we got for us here? Pool one. Who's going to be the first team into pool one? A lot of French going on. Yeah, I need to work with my French if you're going to stay in these competitions. Oh, good old Alma. Alma's over there. Alma Smith is uh, doing the draw here. So the Sharks. The Lions. Brimson have gone in there. In the, but it's not like the Champions League when they get where they've got little screw balls with little pieces of paper. No, they've got their own damn ball. If you're looking to watch the draw, it is on EPCR TV. So go to the EPCR website, or it's actually EPCRRugby.tv. Castre Olympique has gone into the uh, the draw. Clement has gone into the draw as well. Montpellier. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna start. Just, just start dumping them. Just start throwing them in there. Your sap have gone into the draw. Oh yeah, now nah, rugby have gone into the draw as well. I wonder how like uh, Alma Smith's uh, French is. I mean, the guy keeps talking to her in French, and she's obviously definitely got an earpiece. Newcastle Falcons, come on, people, just just drop the ball in. Right, first ball is out, and it is in Vitey 1. Well, that's boring. So, first one of into there is in Vitey 1. In fact, we've skipped ahead, yeah? Crosses, they're flying over here. Alma, wait! We can't keep up with you. Ospreys have gone into pool number two. Edinburgh have gone into pool number three. Goodness me. I mean, Alma, can you just give us a chance here? Please, 
Nine clubs. I'm on like five here. Yeah, I think there's a there's we've had to allocate. So zebra have gone to pool one. I'm gonna be in pool one. If I'm the if I'm the lines, I'm I'm checking out that pool going. Thank you very much. And Newcastle Falcons have gone into group two. Hey, come on, the lads. The lines are out here. Where are we going? Pool two. Ah, shit. Invited two will go into pool three, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we have flown through this. Okay, so pool three will be Gloucester as well. I'm finally catching up here. Oh, yeah, now rugby are going to go into pool one, I believe. Ah, I'm missing somebody here in pool one. Who am I missing? Uh, dragons are going into pool. Right, the sharks. You pull three, I think. Uh, pull one. So the sharks go into one. Which I believe. Yep, that finished that pool. Crisis. The lion's got the freaking pool of death here. Right, and then the last one goes to pool two is Benetton. And Scarlet's the last one into group pool three. Woo! I'm exhausted. Right, there we go. Right, chaps. Um, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not happy as a Lions fan. God, it's me as a pool. Lions with Benton, Montpellier, Newcastle, Falcons, USAP, and Ospreys. I mean, Ospreys were really good in the in the Challenge Cup this last season. Right, so here we go. Let's 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 have a look at this, shall we? Right, so in pool one is invite T one section who uh zebra dragons no not invite two, who am I missing? It shouldn't be invite two. I'm missing somebody here. Sharks or in pool two, who is pool two? Uh, pool one, who's in pool one before the sharks, zebra, zebra are there, pool one, dragons are there. Who by section there? Do I have too many? No, I'm, I'm missing somebody in pool one. Invite you one, pool one, section two, pool one. Dragons should be ahead of Zebra, but then Zebra. Then, ah, I mean, like, so there we go. Now we're now not even missing. Uh, uh, pool one. 
Dragon's actually game ahead of Zebra. And it's not invite T2. It's when X rugby. When no rugby. Right, there we go. That's the final. That's the official pulls. Right, what do we think, people? Now that I can actually go to the comments up like that. Uh, let's hope that that the next uh, at the next well, the Champions Cup will be a little bit uh, slower than that. Christ, I can barely keep up there. I just prepping myself for the Champions Cup, which will start in three minutes, apparently. Yeah, listen, that's a pretty pretty hectic pull from the Lions. Uh, the Sharks, I don't think that's a bad pull, actually. So, it, I think, that, I mean, that, that, pull, that pull three is probably the toughest pull, I, I think. Um, I think people are even saying it in the comments there. It's not a, I mean, as Edinburgh, you're playing, for example, Castro... Come on, Gloucester, and potentially whoever invited to that's that's a that's a hell of a couple of, of people to have into to play. So yeah, that's not an easy pull at all. I think group ones pool ones where you want to be at. Uh, and it's difficult to like look at these pools because obviously as I said you don't necessarily play all the different teams, so it's uh, you know it's difficult to 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 you actually have to think about it a bit. Uh, invite one could be the cheaters and they can play the sharks. Yes. So, for example, if the cheaters are invite one or invite two, they can play against the sharks. If they're invite two, obviously they'll be by themselves. But uh, yeah, they can play the sharks um, because they're not from the same league and on the URC and not on the same conference in the URC. So that's not an issue at all. So the cheaters can play the sharks uh, if they do get drawn into there. In fact, they will play the sharks. And they'd rather play Sharks versus Cheetahs than Sharks versus Dragons and Sharks versus Zebra in terms of the, the way that the entire draw is working. Um, and now I'm not quite sure I'm going to get this. Um... Right, we're back, hopefully. Right, here we go. The Champions Cup now is getting ready to go. Hopefully we've got no buffering issue. And uh, we should be able to get through it quite straightforward, hopefully. London 24, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Adam, say, how am I selected? What's the criteria? I actually don't know. I, I think that one of them will be a non- current non URC premiership or uh top 14 side so I think they'll go and look at a Spanish side or a Georgian side or a you know one of those sort of sides like that uh invited two we kind of well, we, one of them we're hoping that it will be the cheaters I don't think there is necessarily a specific criteria I think it comes down to agreements that they've got with um the various stakeholders and stuff like that so I'm pretty sure one of them will be the cheaters um for me that would make sense But uh, we wait and see, don't we? Give me a Leinster versus Lower Shark group. Uh, yeah, that actually can happen. Um, interesting enough, because Leinster didn't win anything, so they they're not they're not going to be in tier one. So tier one will be Tulu, uh, Munster. Saracens and um, La Rochelle. They, they, they can't be drawn uh, next to each other. After that, it's pretty much free game, really. Oh, this is very emotional. Sound the drums and all that. Yada, 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 yada. Announce a cool sponsor. Apparently Heineken is pulling out, which is quite a big uh, quite a big thing, actually, if they were to, um, to pull out. Uh, but, I mean, it's been a Heineken Cup for years and years and years. So it'll be interesting to see how they're going to fill that sort of financial void that might be left. But uh, anyway, we've got the Champions Cup stream coming up very shortly. 
Uh, like I said, bro, do you either still think you should be in Wednesday and play in the European competition like the Cheetahs? No, not until um, not until Eastern Cape Rugby sorts its shit out. I mean, at this stage, that I mean, they didn't even win the um, they didn't even win the Carrick Cup First Division. Didn't even get close. So they are definitely not even one of the top ten best sides of the country at the moment. If they can get funding and they can sort themselves out and they can get themselves to where they are one of the top 10 percent of the country and uh, and and even more start pushing for being the top sort of five, then you can have that conversation. But that union's just such a mess. Um so yeah, until until they until they start taking themselves seriously, we're not gonna take them seriously. Right, here we go. So here we go. It's the big champions cup draw. Bordeaux, Racing, Toulon, Stade Francais, Toulouse, La Rochelle, Lyon. Pretty big, cool teams involved in these. In the Premiership, it is Saracens, Sale Sharks, Leicester Tigers, Northampton Saints, Harlequins, Exeter, Bath, and Bristol Bears. Basically, if you're still if you're still actually existing as a Prem club, you're basically in the Champions Cup. Only two of them aren't. Um, it's gone to that point, isn't it? Do 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 Sort of sponsors added to them next to them and stuff. I don't really know how you get get around that because they've obviously got these long term deals and the next sponsorship deals. I suppose maybe you can argue and if they're saying you know we don't want to be part, but yeah, a lot of um, a lot of the circuit sponsors I think will be quite uh, hesitant to to go and sign. They're not going to be part of the name, for example, because we do set we do sell our naming rights, which doesn't happen overseas. Um, which is why there's the DHL Stormers, the Emirates Lions, the Sea Sharks, the Vatican Bulls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, we all did our back. We all did our, we all did our research. We all did the... Well, Heineken's still there, by the way. And I suppose they would be until they're not. Interesting, though. Kappa, DHL, all of the partners. Mm-hmm. We're going through the tier one clouds that we spoke about earlier. So, yeah, what's your really sort of initial reaction to that Challenge Cup? I'm, I'm quite... So, uh, the Lions, you might get to come and watch potentially. Montpellier could be quite cool if they come down here. Um, Osprey's been interesting to see who's playing there. Newcastle Falcons could be quite a cool game to watch. Right, let's get Alma going. Yeah, there she is. And then they've got somebody who is verifying the draw with a fan. Pretty, pretty, pretty impressive moustache, to be fair to him. Start at Rochelet, La Rochelle. Start at Lausanne. What well, French does go in first? Saracens. And Munster. Right, so there we go. This is going to start. So we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to have three, four pulls in a row. Let's see who's going to go into pool one first. Right, Alma, what have you got for us? What have you got for us? Saracens. I actually predicted that. If you go look at my graphic over here, I actually had Saracens there already. So Saracens go into pool one. Right, to do you guys into pool two. Monster into Monster go into pool two. And pool three. And that means that Lara Shah will be in pool four.
Right, all that played in my side. Yeah, we go. We're actually up to date here. All right, Alma hit us with a team. Racing 92 will go into. Oh, we're just putting everybody else back in. Sorry. I'm, ahead of I'm even ahead of myself here. That's how much this net. This one, this is going substantially better than the Challenge Cup draw. Nice to have a little bit of a break. Now we've got our pools. There we go. So there's our pools. The question is who's going to go into which pool here? Leicester Tigers go into, into the ball. Do, 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 do. Right, so let's see who are the partners here. Maybe we get the sponsor here. Gilbert, uh, IHG, Hotels, DHL's there, etc. Eddie. You get a hotel sponsor. I don't want to get traveling. Where should we go? Maybe we should go watch the Champions Cup. Go watch the final at, uh, at the London Stadium. Stormers have gone into the. Uh, Glasgow have gone into them. I like them. They're going to be my Champions Cup team, I think. I think they're going to be my Champions Cup team back in the buggers. Right, Alma, what do you got for us? Pool one. Right, Bordeaux go into pool one. Part of going to pool two. Ah, uh, Leinster. The sounds of it. So it does look like it'll be a Munster Leinster pool. No, it isn't. Uh, no, is it? No, it's not. I thought I, was, I thought I heard Leinster. Bulls. Yeah, so they're going to pool one. So Bulls into pool one with Saracens and Bordeaux. All right, where my boys Glasgow going? They're going into pool two. I'm busy trying to find out who my pool three was. Bath. Uh, Evan Bennett, they were the ones that went to pull three. I think Bath have gone to pull three as well. And then Leicester Tigers should be going to pull four then. Yep. Yeah. So, I don't know what you done, that was sure. That was sure, Stade Francais and Leicester Tigers into pool four. Right, that's how it's all looking. Why right, is pool four not updating? Right, there we go. All right, that's how the pools currently sit. Saracens Bordeaux with the Bulls. Right, Bristol Bears. Where are they going to go? They will go into pool one. Ah, 
Ah, uh, the Stormers. Right, there we go. They're going to go into pool two, I think. I think they can go into pool two. Amen. Why has that gone to there now? This is a disaster. I think Storms have gone into pool two, if I'm not mistaken. Got it. Path. And pool two. Sorry, people, this is all going haywire here. That's correct. Pool three is Glasgow Warriors. That's all correct. And then pool four is Lower Shaft, that front, say less Tigers. Yeah, that's correct. But now I'm falling a little bit behind. Uh, so Stormers are going to pool four. Okay, Bears into pool one. Have we got that? Yeah. Racing into pool two. Connect into pool one. It's almost finished. Yeah, uh, Harlequins into pool two. Ah, uh, Leinster, right. Where's Leinster going? Pool four. Right, good luck. So the Stormers won't play them, so that's fine. Made it. Right, so we go. Extra Chiefs into pool three. Why is this so quickly? Like, how are we supposed to, like, try and focus here? And Chilon have also gone into pool... Pool three. And now Northampton Saints. So that's pool three completed. Leona into pool one. Who finished uh, after Harlequins? I'll start. Goofy's finished. And my last one for four is... Hey man, how have we got this for? Pool four, Stormers, Leinster, Sail Sharks. Yeah, it's fine. And there we go. Has it all updated? I hope so. Why does this one keep going blank? There we go. I think that's all correct. I think that's all correct. It looks pretty correct. I'll double check in a moment, but this is blooming. Uh, I think this is correct. I'm just checking to see. Um... Mm. 
All right, where's the graphic? Right, there we go. So, who won? Let's confirm it. It's Saracens, Bordeaux, Bulls, Bristol Bears, Connacht, Leon. Correct. Pool two is Toulouse, Cardiff, Bath, Racing, Harlequins, Ulster. Pool three is Munster, uh, Aviron Bayonet, uh, Glasgow Warriors, uh, yeah, Exeter Chiefs, Toulon, Northampton Saints. Perfect. Then pool four is La Rochelle, Stade Francais, Leicester Tigers, Stormers, Leinster, Sale Sharks. That is correct. All right, cool. So we move. We move, we move, we move. Uh, that is the end of the draw, people. That is the end of the draw. So, what do we think? Those are the pools for the Champions Cup and the Challenge Cup. The only thing we still need to uh, confirm are the two invitees for the Challenge Cup. But apart from that, the draw is complete. And uh, let's have a look at them, shall we? That pool four is disgusting. I mean, it's got Leicester Tigers, who were the Premiership champions last season, with Sale Sharks, who made... The Premiership Final this season with the Stormers, who were the URC champions last season, made the final this season with Leinster, who made the Champions Cup Final. Stade Francais, not a bad side. And then La Rochelle, the current Champions Cup Final. So um, we're going to have La Rochelle versus Stormers. We're going to have stuff. We're going to have Leicester Tigers versus Stormers. We're going to have Leicester Tigers versus Leinster. Leinster versus La Rochelle in the groups. Oh my goodness, this is going to be wild. Pool three is. Not terrible, not terrible. I think pool two is quite tough. Um, yeah, I think pool two is quite tough. Pool one, are the Bulls going to be happy? They're going to be playing Saracens, Bordeaux, Bristol, and Leon. I don't think they'll be that unhappy compared to what the Stormers have to play. Stormers definitely in the group of death. There's, 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 that's definitely um, the one. So I'll go pool pool four. I think is probably the toughest. After that, probably. Maybe pool one or two. I'm trying to decide. Maybe pool one. I suppose it depends on if we're considering <laughs> pool the tough side, which sounds very harsh, but they've not been very good in this last last year. So, um, yeah, this that's a hectic draw. A very very hectic draw. Um, so if I'm the Bulls. I take that draw to be honest, because yeah, no, this you don't in that pool four. Eh? You do not want to be in that pool four. And that's it, people. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, we are going to log off here. It, it was, uh, yeah, it's been a pretty long, um, yeah, it's pretty hectic, to be honest. And uh, we've got lots of stuff to do, lots of content stuff to get myself sorted. So, uh, yeah, I think I think the best thing is to sort of let us digest this. We will be live tomorrow for the rugby news. Where we can kind of sort of um, dissect this a little bit more, I think. Um, but, yeah, let me know what you think of the draw. And I will see you guys all next week. Hello everybody and welcome to Favourite Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's guide, how you can watch the Curry Cup. A lot of people um, around the world are trying to sort of find various different ways to watch the oldest competition in the world. And today we're going to be showing you how you can watch that from anywhere in the world with the use of ExpressVPN and Flow Rugby. Um, before we do that, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So if you're in South Africa, this is being shown on Supersport, um, but it is on Supersport Premium, which means you'll have to pay a thousand rand a month uh, to be able to watch all the action. And uh, obviously, it's also a 12-month subscription. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is going to be showing you how you can watch something called uh, Flow Rugby or using Flow Rugby. Now, the good thing with Flow Rugby is I, I really actually recommend just getting it, to be honest, um, and trying to get a year subscription as well because it's got so many different competitions. Uh, for example, you know, if you look at this weekend, um, it's showing all the Super Rugby. It's showing um, the Carry Cup. It's showing the uh, Six Nations um junior game stuff like that it's got the champions cup it's got the top 14 it's got the premiership there's so many various competitions that does cover um so what you're going to do first of all is that you need to get yourself a vpn because it's only available in the united states uh so you're going to go get your vpn uh, which is a virtual private network and you're going to uh, install it if you, if you get a 12 month subscription by the way you can get an extra three months free and um, for favorite sports supporters uh so then this is what it looks like you use the p dots on the right over here to go to the usa and you're going to turn that on and then you're going to go to Flow Rugby. Once again, it is in the description. And you can get a monthly account for about, I think it's about $30. Or so I think you can get a free trial as well for about a week. Or you can get the annual subscription. And it looks a little bit like, well, this is just this is just the, the, the schedule for the weekend. And uh, as you can see, uh, going into this coming weekend, uh, we've got uh, Bulls versus Pumas there, Pumas versus Lions, um, 
Bulls versus that was last week. So Bulls versus Western Province, all the Super Rugby and stuff like that, all involved this week. There's also lots of other international um, rugby happening. Um, you know, the likes of um, Netherlands versus Germany and stuff like that, all available on Flow Rugby. Uh, so it's a really, really cool subscription to have, and it has all the Curry Cup games on it. Uh, so you can either get yourself a monthly subscription, a uh, month to month subscription, or you can get a year subscription. Chance I think we also have the, should have the World Cup as well. So uh, you know, it's got a lot of different uh, tournaments, and uh, it's yeah, you know, one of the best ways to sort of watch rugby. Um, as I said, it's got the URC, it's got the EPCR Challenge Cup, Champions Cup, the Top 14. Uh, so lots of very good competitions that they do have. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, uh, but otherwise, we've got a step-by-step -step guide in the description. Just follow that and you can watch all the Curry Cup action, which we will be live for some this weekend as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys there. I'm feeling good, feeling good. Yeah, it's going well. Um, working, yeah, working hard, and it's great to be working in the team environment. I think it helps a lot with my with my mental side as well, just to see the work that's happening. Um, I think if I wasn't here, I would actually miss out on a on a lot that the the group is doing. And it's really good to do the rehab here because I've got guys that I can lean on, like out here. Andre and Peter Steff, who I've been speaking a lot, obviously they've done needs as well. So yeah, it's been really good. And is feelings of discomfort? On my knee? Uh, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel good. I feel good. Obviously each day is different, but I take it day by day. But the nice thing is I've been here before. Um, I've, I've been through this. So um, I know I just got to take it, take each day, but I'm feeling good and confident that I'll be, I'll be fine. Yeah, just um, on that, is, there, is there a feeling of deja vu? It's back in Pretoria, back in the lead up to World Cup, back yeah. here, it's like we've done this before. Yeah, hundred percent. It it sucks. It's not nice to be in this position, but the nice things I've been here before, and with the with both uh, at Jack and Kurt Rossi, it's been it's been good to to feel uh, backed and supported like this, and, and and the medical team is working really hard. But the nice thing is that I've been through it before. It's not like it's the first time I'm going through this. And there's other guys in the team who's been through the same thing as well, which is helping quite a lot. Coach Jock, just take us through last week. You guys uh, confirmed that you've taken two teams. Uh, it's now been a week since then. Have you? Gone through your processes, obviously. Have you got a better idea of what those two teams are going to entail and who you're going to take, or is it too far away still to say? No, I think I think we've got a pretty good idea uh, of. Uh, but I, I, on the one end, we've got a pretty good idea, but on the other end, there's still a lot of things that need to happen. Like, uh, for instance, last week uh, uh, with with uh, Andre and with uh, Damien Willems uh, struggling with injuries. I mean, they they will still be. Issues like that. So I think we've got an idea what we would like to do, but it's too early still for us to say, listen, it's going to be these guys. Uh, so we, like, like we normally do, we, we will do a team selection like almost every day. If we had to go now, who do we take? So we, we, in our minds, we're pretty much aligned, uh, but, but it's, it, there's, there's still a lot of uh, time still to, before we can go, okay, listen, these guys are ready. When is the final decision going to be taken then? Like, on the, the um, yes, probably, probably I would say it's probably the week before Australia. We will have a pretty good idea of, listen, who has who has, who, has, who is um, come back from injury, so who we can select. I think probably the week before Australia. Um, okay. So just uh, following up on that, uh, obviously your whole plan in the rugby championship is geared towards getting you guys prepared for the World Cup. It's, it's very sort of focused on yourselves. But um, it's an Australian team that, you know, no one really knows what to expect. Uh, new look side, new coach. It, is there kind of a bit of a thought that maybe you want to kind of get dominance over them from the get-go, as well as the temptation to go, you know, we want to make sure that we, we get on top of them at the start of their season as well? You know, I think we mentioned last week that it will not be an A and a B side. 
and uh, similar to what we did in 2019. I mean, I think in 2019, if you look at the team that played against Australia, Australia that started that game, I think a lot of people thought that that was A and a B side. And but Beast started against Australia. He played. He started in the World Cup final. Bongi started against Australia. He started in the World Cup final. Lewitt and Evans started. Peter Steff started. So I think in terms of that, a lot of people thought it's an A and a B side. We will probably do the same. It will not be an A and a B side. Uh, it will be a side that uh, we will believe is good enough to beat Australia um, here at Loftus. Um, and so yeah, that 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 will be our mindset in terms of that and. And yeah, maybe on Australia, uh, um, yeah, like you rightly mentioned, they, they, there's lots of changes there. So I think that's probably one of the games where we will probably focus internally on us uh, and what we do, because I'm, I think it will be quite difficult for us to, to say, listen, is Australia going to have a Dave Verney flavor or a Eddie Jones flavor? You know, you know we, we're not sure. So probably focusing on us will be the key. No, John Clancy. Yeah. yeah, he's in Cape. Yeah, I was also in Cape. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. How is it different this time round? Obviously, a slightly different role for you, but you're defending champions now. There's a spotlight cast firmly on you guys. Is it very different, or is it a case of processes and keeping the approach the same? Uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the nice thing about this group who's been together for a very long time um, uh, is the fact that we're very realistic uh, and we, we don't often get dragged into what people are saying or thinking. Uh, you know, we know realistically that uh, in 2019 isn't doing that. Uh, but yes, the, the expectations, definitely, uh, we feel that on our shoulders because uh, people expect from us to go and, and do it and we're certainly going to try. Rossi, also, uh, you know, we've taken advantage of the John Clan situation, but the Pacific Island teams are having a bit of a ball there as well. Is mm. that added a bit of an extra um, bit of bite to this World Cup? You know, Tonga have been um, filling their side up with uh, all black and Aussie, um, you know, sort of rejects. So do you think that's going to add even more to this? Yeah, to be honest with you, in the beginning, we did, we did vote against it. But now if you actually see what happens with Tongan team, you, you think it's so fair. You know, think, uh, you know, it, it's fair for them to get guys who were born there and maybe played for another country and come back to Tonga. And, and when I look back at it, um, not because we got John Klein out from that, is actually uh, sometimes for those teams, they were seen as some of the minors or the, the, the lesser favourites in a group. And now all of a sudden, you, you've got these guys that are world class uh, and they don't just get together at the highest level at the World Cup. They were playing in really tough competitions earlier for other countries and in other competitions. Now, uh, I do think that sometimes having really weak teams in your pool doesn't help you a lot when you get into a quarterfinal and a semifinal. Well, if you do, because you have to still beat them now and Scotland and the other two teams in our pool. So uh, I'm, I'm actually glad that I know it's going to be tough and I'm, and I'm not jamming them up at all. I just know of those names. If you start naming those names in that Tongan team, uh, it's going to go on a hell of a match. But I think that, that that's great. Uh, we like, we don't like to go down and go up and go down again. And throw, go up, up, up all and hopefully get to that quarterfinals and eventually the final. Um, good afternoon, gentlemen. I hope all is well. Sure. Just talk us having, just talk us through having Alton back. I'm not sure what this question is being asked, but just talk us through having Alton back in the camp and the selection that I ever in our pools because. You've now got, yes, two trials are nursing injuries, but you've now got four quality trials in the group to pick from, and you especially have to narrow the squad down to 33 for the World Cup. Yeah, no, I think, <clears throat> like we mentioned last week, the, the uh, Elton. Oh, let me start like this. Uh, Elton is like all the other players, like a John Klein, like we, uh, we, we, we follow or do roadmaps on players, probably 60, 70 players. And obviously, with the two injuries that we had last week, we only had Marnie standing as a fly-off, you know, and... And Elton is, uh, how, how great is that to, to, to have the ability to fall back on an experienced guy like Elton, you know, who's, uh, I think he's close to 50 test matches and he's been in our environment. Uh, so it's nice to get him in, in the mix uh, for the two injured guys. Uh, but um, uh, we can, yeah, in, in, in a week or two's time, we can have all four uh, flyers. But 
Uh, Elton was, as you would probably think, he was probably our fourth choice uh, flyer. And again, I'm saying what a, what a, how lucky we are in terms of depth to, to have a guy of his standard uh, um, as a fourth choice available to us. Uh, can I can add to that. I think the benefit of that is a little bit, uh, which we people don't always think about, is that uh, there's no pressure on Andre to rush that injury now. There's no uh, pressure on Damien, who both will be very important for us leading into out of rack the championship, into the three warm up games going to the World Cup. You know, uh, with not having a fourth flyer here, you know, it's almost when are you going to be ready, guys? When are you going to be ready? How are you going to be ready, Andre? Now it's take your time, heal that thing properly. Uh, and I think just maybe an uh, update, I, I think there's a very good chance that Damien will be cleared next week, uh, which is great. But, you know, if we didn't have somebody, we almost would, should, would have been in a position to, because we almost like to force him. Uh, and, and this gives us the opportunity to let those guys sit the close slowly and be 100% ready when we select. John, just, um, you talked about roadmaps now. I mean, Elton is sort of like um, the opposite of it, but just a guy like John. I mean, a lot of people will wonder, you guys talk about your meticulous preparation in your roadmaps, you know, but is he the type of guy that's experienced enough that he doesn't perhaps need to, need to have been like two years at alignment camps and that type of thing, you know, to actually grasp the system? Um, I think if you th if you look at it, uh, um, John Klein is. Uh, let's look at a player's point of view. Uh, he knows the majority of the players. The, he was with you guys at, at Stormers. So if you think he, he knows Ivan Wall, he knows CL Wall. He's played with him. Kitsi, Franz, Malerbe, Bongi. So he's been in. The, so from a, from a player perspective, I think him coming into the mix. It, it's it's not. It's players that he know that he played with. They trust him. He trusts them. So I think in terms of that, from a player point of view, and then from our point of view, uh, we, we obviously coached him at the Stormers and we coached him at Munster. I see brought him over to Munster, so we coached him two years there. So I, th I think in terms of that, uh, we, 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 we know what we have in a guy like John Klein uh, uh, and what he can bring um, uh, to the Springboks. So, uh, yes, and yeah, we obviously, uh, um, and uh, well, we, when we... When we, we we did roadmaps on him as well, you know, the moment the moment he wasn't selected or not selected for Ireland, he was constantly a guy that we had our eye on, and, and like all the other guys. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I said I'll put this question into one. First, can, can you just get your thoughts on on Derek being hospitalised and any well wishes? Yeah. And the second, just talk us through the importance of the Curry Cup. I mean, three stage of that in the in the final. You would have played in the 2004 final coach in the 2005 final, so the Curry Cup would have a very, very special place in your heart. I think in all, uh, maybe I almost asked I'll answer the second question first. Now, I think the Curry Cup always holds up, holds up, and here when it gets to semi final, final, then it, then it becomes something that we're all glued to, and because it's a massive thing. Um, I won't say it's lucky to have Kukwas and Ben Pumas in a, in a final, but it, it's been so. Uh, it's, it was so close at the end of the log and, and who's going to get in and who's, uh, how the Western province must start. Uh, and for those teams to be in the final, um, it's sort of a feeling they don't always play these big franchise rugby and get all the opportunities. Uh, but with the status in our hearts with the Curry Cup, uh, it's a nice feeling. I mean, not by any means. I'm, I'm, I'm not glad the Bulls weren't there. I'm not glad that the other teams didn't make it, but it but it feels like those two teams also have an opportunity uh, to maybe pack that that stadium out in Bloemfontein. And the way the the two games went this last weekend was really enjoyable to watch. So uh, yeah, the Curry Cup will always a, a really warm hearted uh, love that we have towards that, and I think it's panned out to be exactly the same this year. Um, I hope that answer that question. And then. The, Derek, I don't know exactly the situation, and I don't know what, what 100% the thing that's going on there. I mean, Al, he's been here in Pretoria. I played against him certain many times. I had to catch his kickoffs. That first one was always hanging on the six or seven flank, and you got Bucky's and those guys changing at you. Uh, yeah, I, I never. It was always tough. And now I think he's. I'm not know what, what is his battle currently exactly, but yeah. We just hope he means family is okay and he's okay and then yeah, we can just play and send our love to them. Question? Yeah. Is this the quickest we've got in history? Cool. Uh, uh, <coughs> Afrikaans and is it cool for me? Okay, I'll 
operation and um then the area and the So um and then when it's early on by seeing the Jagum and Talu Gonzaga before Pele woke up and Londo in Nika in in Nika motivation means we have sent Suka who you Londo part Kunzima but young Gimisha Bapeter and Gimisha and young is no Zambo Alti and as is no Zambo and Nazala before a Talu woke up. Yeah. No, you are cool. Um, especially when I respect the Turkish and then the East Gangs and then yeah, well, but in the ballot lay support staff around when na, na in the family are and then the medical team once born about the confidence play situation, then in the ends of in the poor like name but um seven same names but there's as second I ends up before and the ends now. Ik heb een vrouw die ik heb, 
Um, Gary Gop, um, identified that, that, that Ipuma was saying in, in Cheetahs and if you know less, uh, I think this, this is great. I think this is also a single and a spieler for our spiel. Kino is also good and I don't know if it's a ball up. But this is a road map in England. So, uh, 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 but, uh, and there are probably spielers by Lok. There are spielers by Hibala with us by the floor. So, we don't have any spielers with us. We don't have any spielers with us. Ons gedink het van, kom Willy was een van hulle, hy het daar laatst een of twee aan die confidentiële informatie uitgeem. So, definitief is daar spelers by die Pumas en by die Cheetahs, wat Pauli spelers is. En daar, Pauli spelers is een player of national interest. Iemand wat moendlik nog vir die springboeke kan speel. Ons het een klomp Pauli spelers wat, 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 ondertoonig is. So, dit weet ik, dit is nie allemaal net ouders wat baie naal by die springboeke span het sê. Dit is spelers wat in die toekomst nog moendlik vir die missie, vir die springboksman kan speel. So ek dink ons die woord kan al pla, en ek dink vir Jimmy en Havis, om in die Karikap finale te wees, en al die spelers, het al pla massieve eer. En gevoelig in die World Cup jaar, nog altyd, in 2007, ek dink in 2019, gaan die topspelers nie in die Karikap speel. Want dit is die World Cup jaar, en die focus is daar, so... Dit is great dat die daadjes van die finale is nie net een dinkie anders van die moenie al wees nie, maar ek dink dit is al klaar genoeg van die satisfaction, ons kan eindelijk baie veel meer van dit doen, as om ponyspeelers na te hee, en blij is in die speel, en ja, ek ken nie wat ek verder sien wat ons kan doen. En Percy en Tam, van nie, uit die aard van die saak, die energie is goed in die span op die stadium, dink allemaal op die stadium, dink hulle kan die wereld beker ben, want daar is nog nie druk op nie, die toets het nog nie begin nie, maar in termen van ons, in termen van ons voorbereiding, is maar om vast te leed, dit wat ons laatst week aan gewerk het, en dan om laagie te laagie daarop te bou, ons is nog seker nie, ons is definitief nie die afgeronde product nie, en daar is nog baie werk wat gedoen het word, en ek dink, een van die, nie dink nie, een van die, aspekte wat ons hierdie week ingebring het, is ons het Jakob Pariper saam met ons, voordat hy gaan vertrek, ek dink hulle kamp vir die wereldbeker begin in Toulouse, ek dink oor die naweek, so dit is lekker om hom by ons te hees, so hy gaan maar net saam met ons weer dier al die nieuwe World Rugby Directives en maak ons maar net weer attent op die, op touch ons wel op die reels, en laat ons net allemaal weer een bykie align is met die referee goed ook, so dit is lekker om hom nie te heen, ons wens om ook al die sterkte toe vir sy toernooi. Kan jy so, en dan, ja, kreeg dat kan so? Oké, hy doen maar goed, maar hoe gaat dit te doen? 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 Yeah, sir. Sir, I was both. But what I see the the last time, I see. I'll come to you. It's quite about some win at him. I see. I think number five. It's about ten. But go go see the the city about the about the World Cup. And so you understand. Sir, I was in seventh place. Men zil. And it's about zil because my ninety. I'm a trailer and I win the World Cup. And and I think in the in the end for your ability. And that's why I think our coach was, you know, Jack, Ben Z, he researched Kakul, because since 2019, he was able to change Kakul. So, he was able to start to adapt to his needs, and he was able to adapt to his needs, Kevin. So, now he said, yes, I was able to get out of the last time. He was able to change his needs, and now he was able to change his needs, and he was able to change his needs. But, he was able to change his needs, but he was able to change his needs, but he was able to change his needs, and he was able to change his needs. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Why are you nodding? I hear you speak ninja. Ninja, ninja, 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 ninja. Ninja,
Hello everybody and welcome to Fairy Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's guide, how you can watch the Curry Cup. A lot of people um, around the world are trying to sort of find various different ways to watch the oldest competition in the world. And today we're going to be showing you how you can watch that from anywhere in the world with the use of ExpressVPN and Flow Rugby. Um, before we do that, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So if you're in South Africa, this is being shown on Supersport, um, but it is on Supersport Premium, which means you'll have to pay a thousand rand a month uh, to be able to watch all the action. And uh, obviously, it's also a 12-month subscription. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how you can watch something called uh, Flow Rugby or using Flow Rugby. Now, the good thing with Flow Rugby is I, I really actually recommend just getting it, to be honest, um, and trying to get a year subscription as well because it's got so many different competitions. Uh, for example, you know, if you look at this weekend, um, it's showing all the Super Rugby. It's showing um, the Carry Cup. It's showing the uh, Six Nations... Um, Junior games, stuff like that. It's got the Champions Cup. It's got the top four teams. It's got the Premiership. There's so many various competitions it does cover. Um, so what you're going to do, first of all, is that you need to get yourself a VPN because it's only available in the United States. Uh, so you're going to go get your VPN, uh, which is a virtual private network, and you're going to uh, install it. If you, if you get a 12-month subscription, by the way, you can get an extra three months free um, for favorite sports supporters. Uh, so then this is what it looks like. You use the three dots on the right over here to go to the USA, and you're going to turn that on. And then you're going to go to Flow Rugby. Once again, it is in the description, and you can get a monthly account for about, I think it's about $30, or so I think you can get a free trial as well for about a week. Or you can get the annual subscription. And it looks a little bit like, well, this is just this is just the, the, the schedule for the weekend. And uh, as you can see, uh, going into this coming weekend, uh, we've got uh, Bulls versus Pumas there, Pumas versus Lions, um, Bulls versus, that was last week, so Bulls versus Western Province, all the Super Rugby and stuff like that, all involved this week. There's also lots of in, other international um, rugby happening, um, you know, the likes of um, Netherlands versus Germany and stuff like that, all available on Flow Rugby. Uh, so it's a really, really cool subscription to have, and it has all the Curry Cup games on it. Uh, so you can either get yourself a monthly subscription, a uh, month-to-month -month subscription, or you can get a year subscription. Chance I think we'll also have, we should have the World Cup as well, so, uh, you know, it's got a lot of different uh, tournaments, and uh, it's yeah, one of the best ways to sort of watch rugby. Um, as I said, it's got the URC, it's got the EPCR Challenge Cup, Champions Cup, the Top 14. Um, so lots of very good competitions that they do have. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, uh, but otherwise, we've got a step-by-step -step guide in the description. Just follow that and you can watch all the Curry Cup action, which we will be live for some this weekend as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys there. We are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's Rugby News Live. We are back with the live shows. It's the international season upon us, and we're going to be having three live shows a week minimum, really. And um, that's going to basically be the plan from now through into the World Cup. When the World Cup starts, we could even be looking at a daily news show. Um, still busy doing a lot of, obviously, World Cup planning and stuff like that, deciding exactly what our, co our coverage is going to look like. And as soon as we know what our coverage is going to look like, you'll know what our coverage is going to look like. We'll have a cool announcement. We'll show you exactly what we're planning on doing for the World Cup. All I can say is that uh, things are, per are, are, are well on their way um, in terms of planning. And uh, we are hoping that we will have an announcement uh, very, very soon, hopefully in the next month, um, of what we're going to be doing for the World Cup. So, uh, yeah, basically today we're going to be looking at all the latest news. We're going to be looking at John Klain. And whether he's going to be potentially making a Springbok debut. We're going to be looking at England's 38-man squad. We're going to be talking about Dirk Hofart, who's currently in hospital. We're going to be talking about um, the uh, an announcement of a um, of, of the Samoa squad with uh, a couple of, of big names involved in that. Uh, we're going to yeah, we're talking about some of the latest transfers and stuff like that. So quite a lot to get through over the next sort of hour. Um, and we've got a we've got a poll running in the comments, uh, and the poll is: Should Jean Klein start for the box against Australia? And uh, that is what we are going to discuss, and and then we obviously go through some of the other stuff like that. Um, so yeah, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe if you are new to the channel, and uh, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so Jean Klein. So a report has come out yesterday that has uh, confirmed that Jean Klein has officially been cleared to play for the Springboks, which means that he will be available for selection come the first test against Australia in a few weeks' time. Now, 
A couple of things about the Springbok squad. First of all, Rassi Rasmus has confirmed that they will split the squad um, between Australia and that New Zealand test, with a bulk of the squad actually going over to New Zealand before the first Australian test. And uh, so it'll be two very different sides that will play the first two opening matches against the rugby, in the Rugby Championship, as there's then a little break before that final match against Argentina. And uh, this sort of then begs the question, where will Jean Klein fit in? Now, there's no Evan Etzebeth for the Rugby Championship, which means there's already a pretty big gap at four. Uh, now, obviously, Arke Stamen can fill it. Franco Mostert could fill it if he needed to. But Marvin always re genuinely really is a, you know, out and out sort of five lock. Uh, Jean-Luc Dupri is supposed to be loaning up at the side pretty soon, so he could potentially move in there. But for me, your like-for-like -like replacement is Evan Etzebeth. And I think that... I mean, for years is Vergara is John Clay. And uh, that now that he's been cleared, I don't see why we do not start him in that first test against Australia. I think it's the perfect sort of quality opposition. Um, a home debut as well in front of a home crowd. I think he takes every single box to give him the debut that he needs and to start already integrating him into the Springbok squad. Um, the question then sort of obviously for, for, for that he has to then prove is... Can he then push for a World Cup spot? Now, I personally don't think that he's that far away from potential World Cup squad. I think that if he starts playing well, I think they'll they'll, they'll look at him ahead of Marvin Ori, for example, because I think Arkes Neyman has, has been playing at five for Munster, for example, the last couple of months, started doing a lot more line-out work. Um, so, yeah, I'd be very surprised if Marvin Ori doesn't go to the World Cup, but the only reason he wouldn't is if Jean Kane really puts his hand up and starts playing really well. So I'd like to see that. I'd like to see players, you know, going out there. And look, I think that Marvin Ori could very well be the lock partner for Jean Clay in that first game. Alternatively, you could be starting him next to Arches Neyman, which also would be a pretty, pretty good idea for me, would be to play Jean Clay next to Arches Neyman in that Australia test. And uh, you then start, uh, you know, like a Franco Master Lua Diaga or, or an Arches Neyman Lua Diaga or Franco Master. But for me, you're sending Frost Franco Master to New Zealand. If you're sending, you know, your better squad to New Zealand. Franco Mostert is part of that. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what that first Australia, well, this first box squad against Australia's team is going to look like, because that's obviously going to give an indication of what the, the team against New Zealand would look like, which is, we do play New Zealand twice, but, you know, our biggest game of, of the season, really, before the World Cup, you know, because you, when it comes to rugby championships, you can't, you can never take Australia for granted, but a home test against Australia, you're kind of thinking, well, we've got to make sure we get that done. You then got a home test against Argentina. So you beat Australia, then basically the expectation as well, you're then playing against New Zealand for the rugby championship. You beat New Zealand, you've beaten Australia, you then throw everything at Argentina. We should have enough to beat them, especially at home at this park. You win the rugby championship. Um, and that's exactly what you want to do going into the World Cup. You know, I can tell you right now, um, Springbok staff are looking at these games going, we want to win all three. We want to win the rugby championship games. We want to try and win the rugby championship. Um, yes, they will experiment. There's no doubt about that. There will be certain players who will play when we go into the World Cup. I think Evan Ruiz will get a game in those three. Um, I don't think he'll go to the World Cup. I think Malcolm Bittstarden will play across some of those games. I don't think he'll go to the World Cup. Alton Yankees will, will, will play a part potentially. At this stage, I don't think he goes to the World Cup. So there are a lot of players who will play. Uh, in these games that won't go to the World Cup. But uh, the focus would still definitely be on trying to win the rugby championship. There's no doubt about that. You know, I think that the, the concept of momentum, the concept of going into the World Cup, having really sort of set the standards and really, you know, you know, come out firing, will give the confidence into the squad to, to re well, I think reaffirm the confidence um, that they can win the World Cup. I think that there's very few people in that squad that don't believe it. But... Whenever there's a little bit of doubt and stuff like that, going and winning the rugby championship, that really sort of cements um, your your sort of attitude that you can win the World Cup and, and momentum and and is is a big thing. You know, and I don't think you can ever ever rule out how important momentum is uh, in any sort of sport in any condition. But you know, it's winning is a habit, losing is a habit type thing. So yes, whilst you need to experiment and you know it's okay to lose a couple of games. Ideally, you obviously want to be able to experiment. You want to be able to put the final touches onto your game whilst winning games, whilst winning tournaments, and uh, you know, whilst putting yourself in the best position to go back to back World Rugby World Cups, which would cement the Springbok side as the best Springbok side ever. And that I don't mean things I don't have an opinion. You know, some people might sit there say, on paper, they might might have been a better Springbok team somewhere along the line. 
But no Springbok team, if you're looking at the core of the team, has gone back-to-back -back World Cups, two rugby championships, if you were to win the rugby championship this season. British and Irish Lions series, you know, they've, they've won it all. They've already won it all, really. The question is, can they win it again? So they're already one of the best Springbok sides ever. If they were to win the World Cup again this year, I think that cements them as the best Springbok side ever. And arguably one of the best teams ever because that New Zealand team that won in 2011 and 2015 drew the British and Irish Lions series in 2017. Now, obviously, you're now looking at a much bigger period. You know, we're, now we're looking at a four-year period, whereas New Zealand, you're looking at sort of six, seven-year period. So not, not necessarily comparing apples with apples. But as, as, as great teams go, this would have to be one of them. You know, in terms of a four-year period, winning the Rugby Championship, a World Cup, a World Cup, and a British and Irish Lions Series, um, and potentially, you know, maybe even a Rugby Championship in between them, it does put them in the, in the conversations of one of the best teams ever. Uh, we want to be in those conversations, don't we? And the, I think the Rugby Championship's important because something... One of the things that Springboks have always struggled with, and one of the reasons maybe they don't get some of the... Sometimes they don't get the respect they deserve is their ability to be consistent between World Cup cycles. And, you know, that 2007, 2009 British Irish Lions series, for example, was really good, but, uh, and, and winning Tri-Nations in there. But that's something that, the, that, for example, New Zealand has done so well over the years, is that they, they pick up rugby championships like it's going out of fashion. So when all of a sudden they win the Rugby World Cup, you know, and, and I mean, they've won three, they've left, they've won three. They've usually got two or three rugby championships in and amongst that sort of four to five year period. And that's what's established them as the greatest rugby nation in the last sort of 20 to 30 years of the professional era is that they pick up trophies like it's going out of fashion. That's something that the Springboks really need to work on. So that's why I think winning the rugby championship is important because it's not just about pitching up for World Cups or for, for British and Irish Lions series. It's about winning trophies along the way. And that's more than just, you know, your freedom trophies and your, you know, stuff like that. We don't have a Bledisloe Cup, for example, which, you know, is, is, is mean. I mean, we've got, we've got different sort of trophies that we can win in terms of in between, in, in the internal rivalries between various nations, but nothing that really comes close to, you know, a Calcutta Cup, for example, in the Six Nations and a Bledisloe Cup. We don't really have that. So winning rugby championships um, along the way and, and throughout sort of this various seasons over and above, winning World Cups is what would really make the Springboks one of the best considered, considered, you know, the greatest nation, rugby nation, or, you know, one of the best teams of all time. They really are, obviously, you know, within the top three all the time. But um, I think it's safe to say that New Zealand have been the dominant force in professional rugby uh, from an international perspective. If the Springboks want to become that, we need to win more trophies in between rugby World Cup cycles. Um, so let's see, let's see, as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll probably, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, next week we'll probably start to, you know, break down the kind of teams we might see a bit more because, you know, we're looking at about two weeks until our first uh, Springbok team is announced. If we do stick to the Tuesday announcement, which generally has been the case of late. Uh, so that'll be two weeks tomorrow. If that is the case tomorrow, we do have a spring, spring press conference. So we can get a bit more information on where the squad's at. If there are any other injuries, Alton Yankees is supposed to be coming into camp uh, yesterday. So it's supposed to start today. Um, so yeah, we can get obviously get a lot more of those squad updates from the Springbok coaches themselves uh, tomorrow. I believe it's Rassi Rasmus and a player who are fronting the the media. I'm not even sure if um, if Jacques Nava is actually part of it. Uh, I can go and check over here. Yeah, so yeah, Jacques Nava and Rassi Rasmus as well as a player will be uh, in the press conference tomorrow. So we'll be there tomorrow. We'll bring you guys the press conference and. Um, yeah, we'll hopefully get some more information on what we can expect from the box perspective um, over the next few few weeks um, tomorrow. So that's pretty much your Springbok update. As I said, John Klein has been cleared to play and uh, therefore could be set to start in that first uh, rugby championship game. Right, now let's talk about England, shall we? Because this is the squad that they have announced for, the, uh, Bright, uh, for a Brighton training camp. Let me bring up the... Um, the, uh, the, 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 the the article there as well. Okay, so that is the squad that has been announced. Now, there we go. Let's go through it. So it's it's, it's a 38-man squad, um, a bit like the, uh, the the Springbok squad, you know, much bigger than um, the World Cup squad, although to be fair, only five players will need to be cut from this one, so it's not that big. Uh, the Springbok squad sitting about 42, 43, I think, now. Um, but the big news for England is that um, Ollie Lawrence and Jack Walker, uh, the bar center and the Harlequins hooker, are expected 
to be available for the World Cup um, selection. They are, um, get injured during training, um, and as a result, you can see that they are not part of the squad. So call it a call it a forty man squad, really, if you add, were to add those two in. But they do expect them to be um, available for the World Cup. Uh, so coming from uh, the uh, out of the out of out of the out of the press release, uh, this is what Steve Borthwick had to say. He said, after an excellent first week's training, we are very much looking forward to being in Brighton. We are pleased to welcome players from Northampton Saints and Leicester Tigers um, who can start, start to integrate themselves in the group. And we look forward to players from Sales Sharks and Saracens joining us in a fortnight. So this squad will obviously still get to be, be bigger. We still need to, you know, there's no uh, Owen Farrell, for example, uh, and the likes. So it's 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 an ever-growing squad that they're working with. Um, so that that is a difficult one to really sort of break down, considering that at this stage this is a squad without the players from the two best teams in the in the English Premiership. So we could be looking at anything sort of fifty plus squad in the end that will then obviously have to be trimmed down. I think a lot of this will be you know an opportunity for players who to to get used to the systems. A lot of these players will not be on the plane to France, but these are going to be the players that are really sort of looking at your injury roster. So if you were to look at your backup players and in, in your roster, for example, a lot of the players here involved um, will be part of that roster. And for them, it's about getting alignment, being part of the setup so that if they get called into the World Cup in a in an emergency situation, they're not coming in cold. They're kind of coming in and understanding the setup and knowing what's going on. So, yeah, as I said, so you, we can go through some of them. I mean, obviously, the, the, you know, if you're looking at the big names here, Joe Marler was recalled into the squad. Um, Charlie Ewell's playing uh, played a couple of Carry Cup matches and then has gone back. Alex Don Branston involved there. Some big absentees, obviously, you know, Sam Simmons ruling himself out of the World Cup. Um, you know, Jack Noel doing the same thing, you know, saying that they're not available for the World Cup, which is an interesting concept, isn't it? You know, players making themselves unavailable for a World Cup so that they can be ready for their club season next season. But I think it shows you the, the shift towards, um, you know, the club rugby being, you know, one of the, 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 the pinnacle of rugby, which I don't think will be anytime soon. Um, but Spence Smith's an interesting inclusion there. Um, I like Alex Mitchell as a player. Good to see him there. Um, Johnny May still around, you know, a couple of other big players, you know. Um, I, I like Henry Arundel. I think he's a good player as well. A lot of scrum offs in this in the squad. Um, if you're looking at some of the, 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 the forwards there, Sam Underhill involved. Um... Obviously, Carl Sinclair is going to be around there. So there's a lot of players here, which are a lot of the, sort of the usual suspects, but there's also a lot of players here who, as I said, just will not be involved when it comes to that final selection. Um, so, yeah, what do you guys think of this uh, of, of this England squad? Uh, again, it's difficult to really look at it because we're still waiting on some of their best players. Uh, I'm very interested to see what England will be like because, I mean, we all being honest, they they're not look great um and this Borthwick just yet it's still a very interesting decision to have made that decision so quickly um they've got a couple of warm-up games so they've got to try and just uh, really get to um get to grips with things and and Borthwick said that uh the first phase of our preparation continues to focus on ensuring the players are physically equipped for what we need to do in a world cup campaign that means the training will be tough and purposeful the players are rising to the challenge We'll work hard again this week and we'll enjoy some time together off the field too, which is also an important part of our preparation. So they've obviously got the, they're now in training camp. You know, they're now, they're now looking at, you know, getting up to full fitness. Um, they don't have to worry about playing rugby for another month or two. You know, their warm-up games only start in August. So they've got a bit of time to really sort of sit there and go, right, people have now had two to three weeks off. They've, they've been react stuff. Now it's about ramping it up, getting themselves into top conditions so that they can then be in playing ready conditions come August and so it's a very different type of preparation that the southern hemisphere sides have because we've obviously got a whole rugby championship ahead so we do get more matches uh close to the world cup we haven't had a six nations campaign you know we haven't we haven't had the five matches that these nations have so we will have fewer matches going into the world cup this year than the uh the northern hemisphere teams the northern six nations teams um which it's difficult to know if it's a good or a bad thing. You know, yes, you know, obviously you'd like to have as much preparation as possible. At the same time, though, um, you you also want to you also want to have quite a consistent build up to the World Cup. 
do you want to be playing six matches in two months before the World Cup, or would you rather be playing three to four matches, you know, in the lead up to the World Cup? It's difficult to know which is the which is the ideal situation. Uh, what is interesting is the fact that World Rugby have stepped in to ensure that there is a proper World Cup uh, warm up season, almost basically, you know, and that all smaller nations, all tier two nations, all are going to have genuine warm up games moving into the uh, the World Cup so that they are all they have the best opportunity of being um ready. And this is something that, you know, tier two nations haven't had in the in the past. They've they've really struggled when they've just kind of been told, you know, you kind of rock up the World Cup, they might get one or maybe one game in before, but they don't have the resources to to be playing several warm up games and having a, a proper preseason, for example. Now World Rugby has stepped in and said, cool, they're gonna help fund a proper warm up season and, and warm up sort of games where all teams can can get some game time against also some top tier nations you know it's not just you know you don't want you, you can't expect Samoa and Utongas who released two very good shots by the way we're going to talk about the the Samoa squad you can't expect them to be able to rock up the World Cup and compete with New Zealand if they've only been playing against Spain and the likes in the last year and that's not disrespect to Spain but it's just there's levels to the game um so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much that makes a difference when it comes to the the tier two nations. Um, I'm trying to bring. Up, I'm trying to find the Samoa squad graphic so that I can bring it up because it's quite an interesting squad. Uh, where are we at? 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 Had it somewhere. Uh, pretty just a couple of pretty cool players announced in that squad. Right here it is. Okay, so that is the Samoa squad that has been announced. And uh, three uh, ex All Blacks and a Wallaby named in the squad. It's a very good squad. It's a, it's a very exciting squad. Now, the, the big names to look out for are, you know, a couple of players who have obviously changed um, allegiance through the new eligibility laws. So if we look at the, the three uh, ex All Blacks, there are um, Charlie uh, Famina, Stephen Luata, and Lima Supuaga. I mean, <laughs> to be able to add. Lima Supuaga to um, either side is is pretty childish. I mean, what a play he is. And then, as if your fly half depth's not, not good enough with him, they then also added uh, Christian Lilofana, um, who obviously played many a game for the Wallabies, also top, top quality fly half um, to the side. So it's a really, really cool team. And for me, they've got some really good players in some pretty good positions. Um, but I think for me, it's, I mean, like, Leo Fano, I mean, that's that's just such a cool, good news story. Uh, he played, I think, about 20-odd caps for Australia. Um, he's had so many injuries and so much that he's had to um, deal with um, even before in 2017 when he was actually diagnosed with leukemia. And um, I think it was actually back in 2000. Uh, when was he? I think in August he made us. He started making his return. But yeah, he obviously was he was diagnosed with leukemia. Had to come back from it, and um, has successfully come back from it. He he played a bit in Japan, and uh, now he's been playing for Moana um, Pacifica in the last couple of years. And now he's going to world, and he's potentially he's going to go to a World Cup. It's the pre World Cup spot, but he's going to go to a World Cup. So I think that's really really cool. I mean, in terms of a good news story, to see that Christian Lafana is going to be at a World Cup, I don't think it gets much better than that. To be perfectly honest. I also think that just I love watching Lima Superwaga play rugby. Absolutely love it. Like I, I mean, I love. We all watched. We all love watching. Um, you know, top flower hearts playing, and uh, Superwaga made the big decision to 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 leave New Zealand and, and give up his All Blacks career. But uh, yeah, it, it now it's an interesting way of getting them back. So if you look at other sort of names, Mark Alatoa in in the front row obviously plays for Leinster. Uh, Jeff Tumaga Allen's a nice player. Um, Tim Nana Williams is a good player. It's, it's a very good squad. I'm very keen to see what they're going to look like in those in those warm games and um, and how they are going to be how competitive they're going to be. It's because there's there's no reason why this team cannot push some of the top teams and and that's what we want to see. You know, maybe some people don't like the eligibility laws, but I tell you what, it's going to make for a far more competitive World Cup. There's no doubt that your Fijis, your Samoas, your Tongas are almost 10 times stronger than they are in previous years because they've suddenly got a lot of the players who dreamed of being an All Black going there and moving back towards. And I think that will encourage more players to be able to want to play for a Tonga. 
a Samoa, a Fiji, and not necessarily always chase the All Black dream. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how sort of they go about that. Um, but that's a pretty cool Manu Samoa squad. And uh, obviously we'll sort of dissect that a little bit more as we get to the World Cup. Um, we'll kind of do a bit of a deep dive into some of the squads, the players to watch, and the likes. Um, so yeah, that's some of the, the some of the squad news. And then on to some pretty pretty depressing news, but uh, well, we you know we we wait and see. Is that Dirk Hochard is is currently battling for for his life. Um, we it was reported that he was um, in a coma last week. He's forty years old. Um, he's been in a coma for over a week already. Um, and over the weekend, there was a report coming out that said that he had a fifty fifty percent chance of of actually making it. So there has been no no update since then. So. I suppose in many ways, sometimes no news is good news. Um, he is still currently fighting in, in ICU, um, but he remains in a critical condition um, down in, in Pretoria. So, yeah, you know, thoughts go to, uh, to the family, and, and we really hope that he does pull through. One of the players, if you, if you look, listen to all the tributes that's come out, for example, um, he's, he's one of the most liked players out there. You know, he's not... Um, He's, it's, there's very few people that have come out and said anything bad about him, I think, ever. Uh, one of the most likable people, really, really down-to-earth, really humble type of person. Um, and, yeah, we really hope that that he can pull through and hopefully we'll get good news on him as the week goes by. But for now, he remains in a critical condition. Um, there has been no massive update since the weekend. Um, so, yeah, thoughts go out to his family and, and fingers crossed that we can hear better news as the week goes by. Uh, in terms of other news, uh, what, have we, what else have we got here? What haven't we spoken about? Um, there's a All Blacks game versus, I'm oh, sorry, a, a New Zealand game. Um, New Zealand game, a Wallabies game, a Wallabies Australia A game that was announced today. Where is it? Australia A are taking on Tonga in July, on the 14th of July. Um, so that's going to be quite a cool game. We might even be doing it. Um, so it'll be in Tonga as well, which will be quite cool. It'll be interesting to see the Australia A side that they put out there. Um, other news, for example, Ospreys has signed with Macron as a as a as a uh, as a clothing partner. Uh, what else have we got here with some of the news floating around here? Obviously, we, yesterday we had the All Black squad announcement. Uh, this weekend we saw Toulouse uh, beating La Rochelle to win the top fourteen. Um, I think that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, I think a lot more news will sort of filter in. Obviously, today's Monday. Um, we still not do quite a lot, to be fair. And uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we will um, hear a bit more from the Springboks and get some news from them. Some of the comments, Vic saying we must use the match against Australia and Argentina to get the non-stars to get uh, a lot of game time. Tian says that perhaps overshadowed by Tonga squad, but Samoa is looking properly strong. Upsets on the horizon. I'm, 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 I'm in for it. I think there's definitely going to be a few upsets in this World Cup. I, I think this is not going to be, you know, you know, like Japan beating the box and bright and all those years ago. I think we could see a few of those in the World Cup at the rate we're going with some of the squads that are being announced. So hopefully, hopefully that will be the case because it'll be a lot of fun um, to see some of these updates. Um, Tian saying also paying for a full recovery for Derek Hochart. And uh, then Sean O'Farrell saying, what do you think of this World League? The World Rugby will say come after the Rugby World Cup 2023. Uh, it doesn't sound good. I think it uh, ignores a lot of the tier two nations issues, which is always kind of the case when it comes to world rugby, isn't it? They're not particularly good at uh, doing their job of developing rugby nations. So yeah, I'm not, I'm a bit skeptical about it. Obviously, I think we'll have to wait and find the final um, plan before we make a final judgment. But off the top of my head, I don't think it's a particularly good idea. I don't like the way it's being done and sort of the 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 the, the, the initial plans. I do think it's going to be very much a it's a bit like an old boys club, you know. It's it's you know all the elite teams kind of in one section and a whole different section. Then all of a sudden, and teams won't get opportunities. And you know we're seeing now, as I said, with Tonga, Samoa, Fiji, how some of these teams are getting stronger. Georgia have done a lot of really good work too to build their rugby up, and we need to keep encouraging that and keep facilitating that, not shutting it down. And I think in any sort of league which will exclude them from you know the table is not going to do anything good for um for rugby in general but uh unfortunately world rugby at the moment just you know you don't, we don't really trust them do we to, to be making the right calls for for uh the development of rugby and hopefully we get proven wrong but at the, say at the moment they're just not making 
a lot of big strides in ensuring the tier two nations become tier one nations. They, I mean, and, and we want to move away from the concept of tier one, tier two nations and just have 20 to 30 nations who are all pretty strong. You know, obviously your top 10 will be a different, potentially different league from your 10 to 20, but let's bridge the gap. Let's make it so that if 15 plays against five, it's not a whitewash, you know, because that's the case in like a football. Anyone in the top 20 can beat each other type thing. You know, there's, yes, obviously the top 10 are, you know, the teams to beat, but there's not this dramatic drop down every single time you move down the rankings, which in rugby, it very much is the case. Um, so that is all we have time for today. We'll be live again on Wednesday. Tomorrow we'll be at the Springbok Press Conference, so we won't be able to do a live show. But uh, yeah, we will be live tomorrow, uh, on Wednesday and again on Thursday. Uh, the fan forum is hoping to come back this weekend. We're just trying to, this week, we're just trying to find a, uh, a time for it. So keep an eye out for that. That'll restart and uh, carry on for the rest of the year, really. Uh, after a couple of week break, we had the guys who yeah, need a bit of time off and stuff. Now we're ready to get it going again and hopefully some cool announcements surrounding that. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to say a big shout out to a bit defender, one of our new partners who started this weekend. We'll have an official announcement out today, sort of explaining a little bit more about the partnership. But uh, in the meantime, please do check the description. Uh, if you need anything from a cybersecurity point of view, Bitdefender has got you on lockdown. They're making sure that all of our systems are not going to be compromised and that we're not going to get hacked and that we're going to be very, very safe uh, during the World Cup and that nothing's going to go wrong. And uh, I recommend doing the exact same thing. So go and check out um, Bitdefender. It's really affordable as well, which is really cool because sometimes cybersecurity can get stupidly expensive. But it's really uh, affordable and really good. Check out the description and uh, please go show them the support because the more you guys support them, the more they support us, the better we can get and the more we can do for you. Um, but apart from that, smash the like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well, and I'll see you guys all on Wednesday. Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sport. For today's Curry Cup final preview, Cheetahs versus the Pumas. Only one can lift the coveted trophy. Will it be the Pumas once again, back-to-back -back champions? Or will it be the 2019 champions, Cheetahs? Where there's a lot of good omens about it because um, both 2007 and 2019, the Cheetahs won the Curry Cup and then the Spring Moss went on to win the World Cup. So I think a lot of the country rooting for the Cheetahs just for a bit of good mojo um, as we head into the World Cup a little bit later this year. But a very interesting picture does await for us. It will be in Bloemfontein, Kilpas at 4 o'clock. We will be live for it, so come and join us tomorrow. Hope to see you guys all on the watch along. Um, but before we look at the two teams, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. And we'll start with the home side, which are the Cheetahs, of course, down in Bloemfontein. And uh, there it is, just one change in the starting 15 that hammered the Bulls a week ago. And uh, it sees Ngobiswe Makoli uh, come into the front row there. He will start uh, in, at Lucid next to Marlis van der Merwe and Conrad from Fury. And the rest of the team is completely unchanged, which means that René Bernardo, who got through a lot of hard work last week, will partner his captain, Victor Sekekete, who also really, especially on defensively, sort of led from the front, uh, had a very industrious game uh, last week in Bloemfontein, where I think he topped the tap count, uh, I think for the game actually, yet, yet alone just for the Cheetahs themselves. Uh, Gideon van der Merwe in the number six jersey next to Siva Goma, as well as Friedel Ulufia. It was a pretty impressive performance from that sort of loose trio. Ulufia did a lot of hard work. Gideon van der Merwe got a yellow card, but uh, still managed to top quite a few of the different stats. So he's also somebody that gets around the park. Has a knack for scoring tries as well. Not just, you know, number six who can jackal and, and, and puts in a lot of work on defense. Uh, the halfback pairing of Rian Clear and Ruan Pinot does remain. I thought that both both of them I thought were tremendous last weekend. I thought Ruan Pinot really just rolled back the years and uh, completely dominated and dictated the sort of the play during the game. And I thought that Rian Clear, for, I'll give him his due as well, played really well. I think, you know, it's this is a nice combination that they've got going. Uh, I thought that Clear uh, kicked very well. I thought that he, that he it was quite a lot of pressure relieved. On, on a lot of the kicks that he made, so I thought that he was he was very impressive last weekend. The two wings are Cohen Jasper and Daniel Cassenda, plenty of pace, especially Cohen Jasper. You don't want to give him too much space at all. And uh, Reynold Fortain, David Brits, Reynold Fortain scored a uh, an early intercept try uh, last week, and uh, he'll be looking to try and go over that whitewash once again. David Brits, very hard carrying outside centre. And then Tapuma Mafura has you know taken to, to, to playing fullback regularly like a duck to water. He's been absolutely tremendous, so much space. Always kind of drifting left and right, finding that sort of half gap, and then he bangs straight through the middle. So he's a he's a wily character to try and defend against. Plenty of pace there. 
uh, for him. And then off the bench, Louis van der Vestesen, Aluto Tsukweni, Hegis van Beek will cover the front row. Jean-Ray Rudolph, George Kinnear, Daniel Martins in a 6-2 split. Sia Masuku does return from injury and will come off the bench. Robert Edson will also provide some cover there. For the Pumas, this is how they line up also. Uh, pretty much a, I think it is actually an unchanged team. Um, so it is corner three, Peter Jake, Simon Raw in the front row. Um, corner, I think all three of them actually getting onto the score sheet last week against the, the Sharks, where they just, I thought, tactically um, out, just sort of outlasted the Sharks, really. The Sharks were really good at set piece um, and try to sort of dictate that to the Pumas. And the Pumas sort of said, no, you know, we're happy to play the kicking game. We'll play with you guys and, and we're not going to make the error. You know, we'll force you guys to make the mistake. So they definitely played a game plan designed to beat the Sharks. It'll be interesting to see how they have played this weekend to try and beat the Cheetahs. Uh, in the second row, Dion Slavin and Shane Kirkwood. Shane Kirkwood will captain the side in the number five jersey. Andre Pochier, Francois Clemens, and Quanda Demarza were very impressive last week. Francois Clemens, they made about 20 plus tackles. Quanda Demarza carried and carried. Very athletic character. Loves it ball in hand. Very good skill set as well. Very deceptively good skill set for a man of his side. Took a brilliant uh, catch of a pass last year. Last week, I think it was a bit forward, but it was a tremendous dive forward to to um, to take it. Crystal September, Tennis De Beer, again, I thought a halfback pair in that uh, for me were really impressive. I thought that Crystal September uh, marshaled the troops pretty well, and I thought Tennis De Beer was absolutely superb with his game management, with the way that he dictated uh, things to the Sharks and, and didn't let you know the Sharks decide where and how to play the game. Uh, the two wings, Etienne Talliard, Andrew Carter, very different type of wings, Etienne Talliard. Uh, quite a physical wing, you know, loves having ball in hand, is a very good finisher, but also likes to be a lot of physicality to his game. Andrew Cotter, much more of a good defense as well from him, but uh, really electric finisher as well. Loves to have ball in hand, very opportunistic uh, wing as well. And the centers, Ali Ngajima, Diego Polis, they have been the, the standout centers throughout the, the tournament, really a combination. Diego Polis getting their contract at the Sharks as a result of what uh, people have seen from him in the Curry Cup this season. Then Devin Williams, who's been absolutely terrific all season for the Pumas, will start at fullback. Uh, off the bench, Donnell, um, Oswagu, Etienne Yannicka, Devon Moritz are the front, the front row. Malembe and Porfu, Rudolf and Amir will cover the rest of the scrum. Then you've got Jervan Sneijman, Gene Willemser, and Vian van Niekerk as well. It should be an absolute crack of a game. Curry Cup finals just generally always are. You know, it's been a while since we've watched a bad Curry Cup final. So let me know what your score predictions are down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven and I'll chat to you soon. Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's guide, how you can watch the Curry Cup. A lot of people um, around the world are trying to sort of find various different ways to watch the oldest competition in the world. And today we're going to be showing you how you can watch that from anywhere in the world with the use of ExpressVPN and Flow Rugby. Um, before we do that, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So if you're in South Africa, this is being shown on Supersport, um, but it is on Supersport Premium, which means you'll have to pay a thousand rand a month uh, to be able to watch all the action. And uh, obviously, it's also a 12-month subscription. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how you can watch something called uh, Flow Rugby or using Flow Rugby. Now, the good thing with Flow Rugby is I, I really actually recommend just getting it, to be honest, um, and trying to get a year subscription as well because it's got so many different competitions. Uh, for example, you know, if you look at this weekend, um, it's showing all the Super Rugby. It's showing um, the Carry Cup. It's showing the uh, Six Nations um Junior games, stuff like that. It's got the Champions Cup, it's got the top four teams, it's got the Premiership. There's so many various competitions it does cover. Um, so what you're going to do, first of all, is that you need to get yourself a VPN because it's only available in the United States. Uh, so you're going to go get your VPN, uh, which is a virtual private network, and you're going to uh, install it. If you, if you get a 12-month subscription, by the way, you can get an extra three months free um, for favorite sports supporters. Uh, so then this is what it looks like. You use the three dots on the right over here to go to the USA, and you're going to turn that on. And then you're going to go to Flow Rugby. Once again, it is in the description. And you can get a monthly account for about, I think it's about $30. Or so I think you can get a free trial as well for about a week. Or you can get the annual subscription. And it looks a little bit like, well, this is just this is just the, the, the schedule for the weekend. And uh, as you can see, uh, going into this coming weekend, uh, we've got uh, Bulls versus Pumas there, Pumas versus Lions, um, 
Bulls versus that was last week. So Bulls versus Western Province, all the Super Rugby and stuff like that, all involved this week. There's also lots of in, other international um, rugby happening. Um, you know, the likes of um, Netherlands versus Germany and stuff like that, all available on Flow Rugby. Uh, so it's a really, really cool subscription to have, and it has all the Curry Cup games on it. Uh, so you can either get yourself a monthly subscription, a uh, month to month subscription, or you can get a year subscription. Chance I think we'll also have the, should have the World Cup as well. So uh, you know, it's got a lot of different uh, tournaments, and uh, it's yeah, one of the best ways to sort of watch rugby. Um, as I said, it's got the URC, it's got the EPCR Challenge Cup, Champions Cup, the Top 14. Uh, so lots of very good competitions that they do have. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, uh, but otherwise, we've got a step-by-step guide in the description. Just follow that and you can watch all the Curry Cup action, which we will be live for some this weekend as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys there. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. It is Curry Cup final time. It is the last final of the season. It is, actually. We've had top 14 final. We had Premiership final. We had URC final. We've had Super Rugby final this morning. Quite controversial. Crusaders winning it uh, right at their death. Very interesting game it was. And uh, today we've got a Curry Cup final. And this really does finally bring the close or a close to the domestic rugby season cheaters versus the pumas who would have thought who would have thought that these would have been the two teams uh in action today in the curry cup final the big question that everybody wants to know is can 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 the pumas do it can they go back to back titles or will the cheaters um uh, get back to winning ways and a lot of south africa are really hoping that uh, the cheaters do get back to winning ways because uh yeah, if we look at it over the years, the last, uh, she's winning in 2007, 2019, the Supreme was going on to win the World Cup. There's a lot of good uh, mojo um, with the Cheetahs winning the Curry Cup. So a lot of people, on the, with, with that respect, tr hoping for a Cheetahs win. I think a lot of the, the Puma support is obviously pretty unwavering the fact that they want to see their team get the job done. Um, but kick was in about a few minutes' time. Uh, the teams are actually just ready to running out at the moment, so uh, it's time to start really getting exciting. So we're going to get our referee today is up there and uh, striding around. Um, I imagine we will have the national anthem and then we will um, get things underway. And uh, yeah, so if you haven't already, we've got a poll running in the comments. So go and uh, vote in that poll and uh, let us know um, who you think is going to win the game. And I'm just trying to sort out the, the audio so I can hear what's going on here. And yeah, so go 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 let us know who you think is gonna win the game. And um we are hoping to see I just want to see a good game to be honest. Um obviously there's as I said, it'd be nice for the Pumas to win. I do think the Cheetahs deserve to win with regards to the sort of the season they've had. So it's a bit of an interesting one in terms of you know, who kind of deserves to win. I mean, I think both teams will be very worthy victors. Uh, I think that, that, you know, from an underdog story, it's always nice to see the Pumas win, but, you know, Cheetahs at home, there is a little bit of that World Cup uh, mojo when they win that, you know, when the, the box win. So, yeah, if you kind of, if you, if you are a bit superstitious, then obviously there's a certain amount of that as well. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, I just want to see good rugby. If I see good rugby, I'll be happy. I want to see a nice close game. I want to see things that are, yeah, I want to see exciting stuff happening um, at the end of the day. Okay, I'm just busy sorting out, as I said, just sorting out the stream over here. Why am I not hearing anything? Yeah, so I'm just busy trying to sort out a few things, make sure that we're ready to go. Then we're going to crack the beers and we're going to get going. Um, and uh, before we get going, a big thank shout out to a couple of new members to the channel. Welcome to Jan de Blanche and Johan Wurtis, and the uh, new members to the Fair Sports Members Club. So welcome. Captain. 
Da, 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 da. Yeah, if you have any score predictions, put them down in the in the comments below. Let me know who you who you back in to get the job done today. Yeah, but no audio for some reason, so just trying to sort that out, and uh, hopefully it'll be sorted in a bit. But the national anthem is done, and uh, we are now ready to kick off. Right, Jimmy Stonehouse versus Harvey's Faree. Uh, two very different teams going toe to toe. We're going to go through the lines in just a second. Sorry, I was a bit distracted by trying to get everything working. So we'll we'll go through the teams now, and uh, yeah, give me get, get in the comments. Let me know who you're backing. Yeah, who who did you like to win? Um, as we are waiting, it looks uh, as we are going to wait for the Holly Davidsons to, to exit the uh, side. But let's go very quickly through the teams. The home side, it is obviously where um, Holly in the front row. That's the only change that she is starting for, uh, lineup. Minus Van Merva, Conrad from Fearing completing that front row. Renia Bernardo, Victor Sikakete in the second row. Then we've got Kylian Van Merva, Sibabala Goma, Friedel Olafia at uh, are the back row. Ruan Clear, Ruan Pinar, the two uh, outside back, or, or, yeah, or the, the half back pairing. Uh, we then got Cohen Jasper, Daniel Cassenda as our two wings for the Cheaters. Renault 14, David Britz in the center. Tapiro Mafura at full back. The whistle blows. The Cheaters are playing right to left. Ruan Pino with ball in hand does get things underway. He goes to the left hand side. It should be a first touch. It looks like for Andrew Cotter. He goes back into Quanda de Maza, who had a brilliant game. The big number eight last weekend. Solid carry for him. Chris was September now. Uh, looking to uh, create a bit of a better angle. First carry for the captain of the Pumas, Shane Kirkwood. Now Chris was September should go back. And it will be Tears de Beer who will find a hopefully a good clearance for them. Not looking for touch though. Throws on that the throat of Tapio Mafura. He throws it inside to Ruan Pino. Points to the skies and lifts it into the skies. The Pio Mafura is chasing hard. Tears de Beer getting across there. We will probably mark this. Does mark this. And uh, that'll give us a bit of opportunity. No, he's decided to take quickly. He sees a bit of space down that right hand side. Very good tracking back there from Cohen Yasper. He throws it back inside to Ruan Pino. Once again, points to the sky and will send the ball there shortly. Cohen Jasper is chasing hard. This is just outside 22. Very, very well weighted. Tends to be underneath. It is knocked on. Kenneth Van Merva is around there. He knocks it on as well. So we will have a break and play and have a first scrum, which will allow me to tell you what the rest of the team for the Cheaters are. It is Louis van der Vestes and Aluto Tsakweni. Henkes van Beek in the front row. Jean-Ray Rudolph, George Cornea, Daniel Martins in a 6-2 split. Sia Masuku and Robert Ebertson uh, there in our... Uh, in as well. If we look at the Pumas, it is corner three, Peter Jacobs, Simon Raw in the front row, Dion Slavich, Captain Shane Kirkwood in the second row, Andrew Fischer, Francois Clemens, Corner de Marza are the loose trio. Your halfback pairing is Chris Wells, September, and Tennis de Beer, Etten Talyard, Andrew Kotter, Devin Williams, the back three in the centers. It is Ali Imgajima, Diego Polis off the bench, Donald Osagu, Etienne Yannicka, Dale Moritz, Malemba and Porfu, Rubal van Amerva, Giovanni Sneeman, Jean Willemsa, Vian van Niekirk. First scrum of the day. Big scrum of the day. This is about ascendancy. This is about getting that first hit. This is about establishing who's who in the zoo here in the first scrum. Good scrum. The PNL are going to Mafura. Mafura putting the kick in behind there. Daniel Cassenda after, but it's gone too far. It's until y'all's come back and he's eventually gotten it down. I'll tell you what, it looked like it gone too far. And all of a sudden, Daniel Cassenda was right there and uh, wants to have a go. Right, so it will be a, a goal on dropout. Tends to be a does take it. And it's fielded by Ruan Pino. He's actually basically at the drop goal. He struck it pretty well as well. Oh, off the uprights. Tends to be onto it. Well, that would have been a nice little moment there. Now I'm a pro. Lifting heights. Now the test of Chance to be here. He gets across there. He knocks it on. It falls to Rion Clear. Now down the side, Daniel Cassenda. Getting the offload there from uh, Sibabola Korma. Balls. Yeah, penalty for the Cheetahs. It didn't look like an absolute mess at the breakdown there. It's not too surprising. And I uh, wouldn't mind a bit of a break and play. I've got a beer I need to pour. And, uh, you know, before. Uh, well, I can. We need people to get uh, to a little break and play. It would be nice. 
But uh, yeah, please do keep uh, voting in the poll and uh, let me know who you think is going to win this clash. And I'm just trying to pour a half decent beer. That's not a bad pour, I don't think. I don't think that's a bad pour at all. It's a nice little head, maybe a bit too much head. But then, like, can you really get too much head? Anyway, we've got a line out here because the cat takes it very well. Just outside, just inside of 22. Rody Moya yeah, for the cheaters. Looking pretty good. It's being, it's being pushed towards the, the right hand side touchline there. So they've got to try and make sure they keep it in. They do keep it in. It's available for Rian Korea as well. He goes to Rian Potato inside ball to Daniel Cassender. Now fires it off. Solo carrier there from Renia Bernardo. Gets to a lot of work that he does. We're on Pino now. Going across to Tapiro Mafura. Mafura brought down by Andrew Cotta. And a penalty. Oh, you're back for, I think a penalty advantage back at the mall there for the Cheaters. Right. Interesting decision. Yeah, Vic CK does point to the, the polls. And why wouldn't you at the end of the day? You know, it's... You don't want to stuff around you. It's a final play final play of rugby here. Go and um, take the points. Start building a bit of a lead. We're on Pino. Pino for a good ball. They're right in front of the pass. Easy as you like. This should be 3 0 to the Cheaters. Steve's got a beer. Life is good. And we're going to close the votes for who you think is going to win at the 15 minute mark. It looks like a pretty good attendance, by the way. Those lower tiers absolutely packed to the brims. As Bruno Pinard does open the scoring, he slots his first kick of the day. Remember last week, he did not miss a beat. He was flawless off the tee. And uh, if he does that again today, I do think that the, the men in white and orange will be celebrating another Curry Cup title. Obviously, we're jotting a few things down in his notebook. Cheers, people. Cheers. Let me know what you're having a drink. I mean, it's a Saturday afternoon, Curry Cup final. We usually we used to do this back in October. It is now uh, June, not even July. And they're watching the Curry Cup final. So cheers to the Curry Cup and cheers to everybody watching. <sighs> right, tends to be a ball in hand. Goes to the left hand side. Let's keep going. It's still going. It's still going. It's gone out in the full. You see, you can't be doing that. And this is the thing when it comes to experience. Not that it tends to be as an inexperienced player, but you need your experienced players to, to be on it. And uh, they're taking it quickly here, the cheaters. They've got it on the right-hand side. I think they're going to have to come back. They are going to have to come back. Yeah, a little bit of innovation there. I think trying to take it quickly. Not sure what the... Yeah, so Captain are really elected for the scrum, so they can't take the line at the halfway mark. <laughs> but it'll be a scrum for the Cheetahs, so it's a really poor um, bit of a period there for the, for the Pumas to go and concede a penalty. And then to go and, and make a hash of the kickoff. So they'll be they'll be frustrated about that, but uh, it's still early days. Uh, another scrum here. Right, I'll tune in here now for Cheetahs though to continue their dominance. They can get a scrum penalty here. It's within Ruan Pinar's range. Let's see what we've got for the scrum. Yeah, there's a cheat put in as we run clear. Ball in hand there, puts it directly underneath. Mons van der Merve, it's a good scrum. Aaron Patain going to uh, Cohen Jasper, chips ahead there. It will run into touch. Nice idea, but uh, it's not a bad result actually. Pinning the Pumas back to the side of 22. Putting a bit of dart to them, little chip ahead. Chip and chase there from Cohen Jasper, has got plenty of pace. Busy waiting for the scoreboard to, to kick in. So until then, we're going to create a manual scoreboard here. And it's a penalty for the for the Pumas this time. So if you just give me two seconds, I will have a manual scoreboard set up very shortly. Okay. 
and we are sitting here at the eight sort of 45 mark. Yeah, I was thinking about time for our coverage to pretty pull in the, the fee, but there we go. That is the score. Three points to the cheaters at the moment. Right, so two pairs can see by the Pumas, but they are inside Cheetah's territory for pretty much the first time. And the first line is the good one. Goes to Shane Kirk with Christmas September, going to Andre Fashir. He'll be at a very good game. Gets the ball away as well. It's a very nice carry there as well. Start of stuff being done by the Pumas. It's a nice uh, carry by PJ Jacobs. Oh, it's an interception though. I think it's Kenny Benamurba. No, it's Friedel Olufi has come away with the ball. To intercept ball here. Ruan Clear wants to speed it up. Goes to the right side to Ruan Pino. He's a bit of space. Sort of chips in and over on the right hand side. And uh, Tears to Beer is now seeing a bit of space. So Ruan Pino is having to backtrack a little bit. And he does cover it very well. That shows you the experience. He knew exactly where that ball was going. He returns the favor. Goes to the hands of Quanta Demaza. Gives it inside to Devin Williams. Devin Williams, that left boot, wants to go down on the right hand side. He sees a bit of space. This has got 50 22 written all over it, except that it's bounced away from the touchline. Picks it up here, does the Pira Mafura. Trying to get away from Andrew Cotter. Does get away from Andrew Cotter. That's a dreadful kick. It's come off the boot, actually, of Francois Clemens. And all of a sudden, oh, high tackle. I think that might be penalized. Now the initial hit's okay. They pinned the shooters back on the five meter line. Now we're on career. So Austin Vitsi gets the move. Goes back to Ruan Pinar. Ruan Pinar. Will not find touch. Devin Williams underneath it. Goes inside to Quanda de Mars with the big man. Sees a bit of space. Bursts through the tackle of two. Still going. Loses a boot in the process. Because it's a 10 see the bit of space. Oh, nice idea from Ingejima. Wants to do a tap it back inside. A tap it forward. It will be a cheater's scrum. Right, going to some of the, the comments. Look at Becker saying, let's go cheaters. Franco von Hastings saying, thanks. Uh, I'm in Canada in Whistler watching your commentary. Well, there we go. No, welcome to the stream. And yeah, the score should now be working. We're having to work on a manual score and we'll wait and see if our data feed does kick in. That's a dreadful kick from Tapia Makura. Absolutely dreadful. Could have ended up a lot worse. The fact that they've ended with a scrum on the 22 is a pretty good result given how bad that kick was. Right, so 10 minutes into the Curry Cup final. We are 3-0 to the Cheetahs so far. The Pumas are uh, going into the game in the last couple of minutes. They're in a couple of nice phases, and they want to try and build on that. And what I always say about the team like the Pumas, it's a bit like the Greek was, is you just cannot keep them in the game. If you're going to try and beat them, you've got you've to you've win the game. You've got you to you put them to bed. You know, you can't be sitting there at 60, 70 minutes with them five points behind. They know how to come back. They are the definition of a never say die team. So you've got to put them to bed early. Because you leave any space for them to come back and they will. They genuinely will. Most times as well. But it is a cheer scrum. We're unclear with ball in hand. Just outside 22 here for the cheers. Way back inside their own half. It's got a pretty full grandstand in the far side. They're pretty good in attendance actually. Uh, the Puma scrum actually slightly heavier. Which is quite interesting. And it's going to have a reset here from Sumigeta Zalazweni, our referee for today. Well, comments talking about a, a, a typical winter's pitch at Bloom. I haven't seen this pitch, this uh, this green in winter in a long time. I'd say it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good pitch, actually, for as, as far as the free state is concerned. Usually a very yellow, hard pitch. Not pleasant pitch to pay on, a bit like Kimberly, but this one's quite green actually. There we go. We've got the reset scrum, we're ready to go again. Looks like a much better hit there. Ryan Kriaj taking a moment, but then puts sliding under the feet of his hooker. Now he goes to Bruan Pinot. He's just going to hammer this downfield. Cotter goes back inside to Devin Williams. Devin Williams. Shapes to, shapes to run it, but he's been hit by Rainer Fontaine. Big counter right now coming for the Cheetahs. The Pumas under a lot of pressure. Andrew Carter doing very well to get away from the ball. And he's got a bit of space. He's off. Here's Andrew Carter. Needs some options. Ruan Pino does wrap him up. Good tackle coming from him. 
Very, very good work there from Andrew Carter. Chris also Tim is going on a break here. He's got numbers. He goes to Ingajima. Ingajima out towards Diego Polis. Back inside to Ingajima. The centers combining well. Into the 22. Go to the Pumas. Pick up and go. And you're going away to PJJ Clips. And uh, forward pass. He would have been away. He would have been away. But that is the danger of the Pumas. They are a brilliant counter-attacking side. Give them an inch. They'll take a mile. Andrew Carter here was away. But the handling here, that the awareness, the offload game. Chris was September getting that ball out nice and quickly. And then just the, the, the offload from Dion Slabbert to his hooker, just going slightly forward. So there will be another scrum here for the cheaters. Uh, there are quite a few. Not too much uh, really giving at scrum time so far. Bit of a break and play, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to have to adjust the time. I hate a manual timer. I don't understand why either. Last weekend was working fine. Uh, I think this is a good time to end the poll. We're going to end the poll, yes. Yeah. So uh, 400 over 400 votes. 427 votes. And the cheaters, a landslide victory for who people think will win the match. The question is, are they? will they be correct? Or uh, do the Pumas have uh, another result in mind there? Looking through the, pr the crowd there. It's a good crowd. It looks like a very good crowd. I'm actually impressed. Good to see. I think this Curry Cup started pretty badly, and I think we were very pessimistic. But you look at that crowd, and you think, yeah, you know what? We'll take that. Somebody tell me somebody needs to get that poor kid a tissue. Oh, shame, man. I mean, really? You had, of all the people to pick. All right, the time is back on. And, uh, yeah, we've started with a scrum just inside the 22. She has feed to the ball. All right, let's see what they can conjure up. Uh, this is, I can tell you right now, this is going to go straight from Rian Kred. No, it's going to be the Olufe. goes to Rian Kred on the blind side. He's up that high in the air. It's not a great kick from Rian Kred. In fact, it's pretty much gone directly out. So it's going to be a Puma's line out on the 22. It's not a bad result for them. He had a very good game last weekend at Rian Kred, but that's definitely not one of his better kicks. We're good in the season, though. You have to be good if you're going to play everyone Pino and Flower instead of Scrum Off, which is, is his natural position. See Masuka on the bench as well. So plenty of options here for the Cheaters. Good line up there from the Pumas. They're looking to try and see how they're running more themselves. Not going anywhere. PJ Jacobs is standing and waiting at the back of that mall. Now they get a bit of ascendancy going forward a bit. Making a few yards here. Christmas September looking to come at his weight. As well as potentially trying to get the ball out if needs be. Friedel Ulufi is coming down the left hand that side of the mall there. He has been told to leave it though. Now the ball's come out to Christmas September. Goes to Ingojima, puts his shoulder down, and he's wrapped up by his opposite number. Rena Forte does run down and does look to try and present the ball. Slow ball here for Christmas September. Goes to Quanda de Maza. Now a good carry there. Coming from corner for the former Lions prop slash hooker. Christmas September now. Dion Slabbit. Good continuity this time for the... Oh, he's been, not been playing the scrum off? No. So it's a bit of a poor ball, but TSB has done very well to cope with that. Minus by the moment, trying to get his hands on the ball. And does win the penalty. But surprised about that. I don't really think he actually had uh, hands on the ball there. So I think holding on is a bit harsh in my opinion. Man saying, I hope the wife is doing the bright today. Enjoy the beer. Well, that is the thing. Yeah, so what is everybody doing? I mean, it is bright time. I mean, fires should be being started here. So are people, you know, on the iPads out by the bride? We lit the fire. We're back in and out. How are people coping with a 4 o'clock kickoff? Not usual time. Um, often a sort of 5 o'clock kickoff slash a 3 o'clock kickoff. But anyway, Ruan Pino now going short to Rana Fortain. That's a huge hit there. Brilliant tackle there on Friedel Olufia. 
And I think it's the two centers combining there. Good hands this now. Spiro Mafua looking for options. Going to Cohen Yasper. Cohen Yasper got Monas van der Merwe. Goes himself. Chris of September wrapping up. And the ball comes loose. Goes to Monas van der Merwe. Good pick up from him. Comes loose again. And uh, it's picked up. I think it looks like. Um, I think it's in Copa Seas where. Bernardo carrying there. Puma's now under a bit of pressure here. Penalty for the Pumas though. I think it's sealing off is the call. No, I think it's actually holding on. It's a good breakdown penalty. Right, so David Williams will be tasked with uh, finding touch here. Decent touch finder there from uh, Devin Williams. Right, what can the Pumas conjure up? Still uh, scoreless here are the Pumas. No tries in the match so far after the first 16 minutes. I'd be very, very surprised if we don't see at least about three tries given the way these two teams play. It's a good ball there from uh, Andrew Bashir and Anik Mgajima just putting his head down. Running a crash ball there. Christopher September popping it up to PJ Jacobs. Just outside the 22. Solid tackle on him though from Friedel Ulupia. And ripped it in the tackle as well. Ripped forward, I think, so it will be a knock-on advantage. So Pumas retain possession with the knock-on advantage as well. They'll lose the knock-on advantage now. As it goes to be a little chip over the top for Diego Polis. Now he's been blocked, so they'll go. Oh, penalty, in fact. Well, that's pretty well won, and all of a sudden, this will be kickable, so... Yeah, you got to think that's a bit poor from the cheat. It's almost a bit of a harsh call, I think. We'll have to have a relook at this, but if this is deliberate uh, um, obstruction, that's pretty poor. I had a knock-on advantage, so there wasn't too much on there, and all of a sudden, they've now conceded the penalty, which the Pumas should be able to slot and uh, equal the scores here. There's a high tackle there as well. I wonder if that's actually not what the tackle, the penalty is for. So it tends to be a will take the points here. He's operating at 71% this season. He's a much better kicker than that though. So he'll look to try and up those numbers. Um, this is just, what, two meters right to the poles here. Just past the 22. It doesn't get much more straightforward than this. So it should definitely be three points a piece. And does on the left there, looking pretty good, yeah. Good kick there from Terrence DeBell. The scores are level as we approach the 20-minute mark. Three points apiece. Ah, love the taste in beer of basically anywhere. Anytime, anywhere, really. Right, Ron Pino goes down that left hand side, and uh, well, I tell you what, got into a bad, bad position there to Andrew Cotter, but eventually did manage to do very well to get into a good, a bit of position to take the ball, and uh, he's uh, set up a ruck as well. So good work eventually coming from the wing. Now, Christopher September digging for that ball. He's got tennis to be as well as a couple of forwards. Does go to Dion Slavitt. Now, Devin Williams going down the center of the park. Ron Pinar is there. Goes to Pima Mafura. That's what Mafura going to do. He's looking to run himself. Got a couple of support players there in probably sees where. Balls come loose though. Turn over ball though. Oh, Andre for sure. A penalty here. I think this might be hands in. Must be the only thing I can think of. This should now all of a sudden be six points to three. So, Francois Clenons, you can see the annoyance in his face. I think he knows that he's stuffed up there. Poor penalties you can see, and this will give the opportunity to cheaters to uh, take the lead once again. So there we go. Brings him down. Yeah, I just never, never, never. Needs to be able to get up and disrupt that. Yeah, so the, the people start thinking they had turnover ball not to be... So Ruan Pinar will measure up his second uh, kick of the day. Uh, 
That's a pretty looking kick as well. So the cheers, we, do we take the lead to the boot of Ruan Pinar? The ever-reliable boot of Ruan Pinar. He's just aging like a fine wine. Has apparently con uh, signed a new contract, according to Harvey Spree. Has confirmed he will be playing in the cheers for another uh, year. And uh, that's very big news for the Cheetahs. So six points to three is where the score stands. And we're at 20 minutes, almost 21 minute mark. Now it tends to be a going down that right hand side. Big chase coming from Andrew Cotter. But Victor Sekikete, bit of a fumble, but gets up and takes it well eventually. Now we're unclear. Going to Super Bowl of Coma. You're going to see a lot of him carrying today. Digging for the ball is clear. Goes back to Pinar. Lifts it high in the air. A lot of chases there. And, and it tends to be here. Once again, he's under a bit of pressure. Well taken this time. Daniel Cassender all over him. But uh, he does manage to stay infield. And there's a couple of players around this. The ball is available for Chris for September. Going to Andre Fashir. Met hard in the tackle by uh, Reno Bernardo and Victor Sierkete. The two cheers locks working hard in the tackle as well. Chris for September. Now going to uh, Shane Kirkwood who will lift the Curry Cup trophy if the Pumas are to, to win. Nice to it back to Devin Williams. Devin Williams has gone, gone high, but not particularly far. Daniel Cassender, as well as Etienne Talion. Etienne Talion, brilliant take from him. Manages to get up and go again as well. He buys a bit of time for his, for his teammates to um, add their support. September now going to Corne Fourier. And penalty advantage here for the Pumas. Hands in the rack at the moment. Now tends to be a... Lifts it towards that right-hand side. Penalty advantage. Andrew Cotter's going to come herring down and Ruan Pino. Takes it very well. But they'll go back for the penalty advantage. So it will be a penalty for the Pumas. Interesting to see what they go for here. It's on the left-hand side. So it's not the most straightforward, um, you know, kick a goal. Personally, I would add, I think the Pumas should actually back themselves. I think they should be going to the corner. Trying to see if they can find a couple of tries. Try and see if they can, you know, force the issue a little bit. As we're looking at a couple of uh, the Curry Cup greats in and around the stadium. A nice puerta. Is over there. Nakadrotsky there as well, former Chiquita's coach. They are going to go for Pulse, but looks a bit. So it tends to be a we'll try and take the points here. That's a bit further in field, actually, than, uh, than I initially thought. So, yeah, it's on the 10 meter line. So it's 10 meters inside, just past the halfway line. So, Probably looking at about 50 meters on the angle, or just shy of that anyway. Yeah, 49 meters. Do I lie? Do I lie? Well, I suppose I didn't say 50, so technically I did lie. But, I mean, it's close enough, isn't it? If we round up to the nearest 50, or well, the nearest 10, then we're there. Yes, five even were there. Right, tears to be up. It's looking good. It's looking good. It's looking look. It's a brilliant kick. Sail straight over the middle with a bit of purchase there. And uh, scores are once again level as the Pumas uh, hit back and uh, make it six points apiece after 24 minutes. Now, yeah, very good kick there from tears to be up. Neck and neck so far in the opening 25 minutes, and it's flown by, actually, to be honest. Once again, they're peppering Andrew Cotter. He goes into Quanta de Marzo. He's running a good line. Minus Van der Merwe doing well to get it across there and make the tackle. September now going to Cornet for Reeve. Dash tears to be up. He's not happy with that kick at all. It's interesting to see how they do switch between Devin Williams tends to be a right foot, left foot combination is very useful. Both very, very capable kickers. But uh, they're the best clearance there from tennis to be They're just outside of 22, so it's an opportunity yet for the Chiefs. A bit of an opening for them.
Long ball out there to Danny Cassander and, and, and Devin Williams trying to bounce on it, but misses the first tackle. Cassander does very well to keep himself in play. Now we're on clear. Pinar going short to Morris Vanham over. Peter Jacobs looking to try and jackal that ball. Pinar back towards Fortain. Jasper. Kenny van der Merwe finds himself on the wing, gets away from one, still going. It's Kenny van der Merwe. Diego Polis is going to try and complete that tackle. It's eventually actually completed by Quanda de Mars. He's had a very nice season. Victor Sekir to the Cheetah's captain is met by a host of Pumas players. Does well eventually to come down to the ground. You know, a nice and flat ball. That's a big con con collision there. Conrad from Fury. It's a good tackle from Ingajima. Korea now. We want Pino. Bit of a, I think it was a sort of a deflection actually of Mars van der Merwe. Pumas trying to hold him up, but he does manage to get his knees to the ground, so they do have to release. She is now looking to try and find a bit of momentum there at uh, the team meeting line. Now we're on Pino, goes to uh, Renan Fortain. Good hands, uh, Cohen Asper, good hands. Kenny van Merwe has got space on the outside. Kenny van Merwe, he's still going, he's still going. He throws the ball back inside. And they've left it behind you, I think it's Diego Polis. Cohen Jasper's come away with it. Surely there must be a couple of knock-ons in there. I'll tell you what, Kenny van der Merwe, I thought he was away. Yeah, it's a good pass. He managed to get the pass away before he does go to touch. Yeah, Kenny Van Der He does score a lot of tries. He is a he is a flank that does know his way around the try line. So time is off, so we're just gonna stop that there very quickly. But uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's a he's a flanker that knows how to, to find the try line. I think he was one of the top scorer. I think the Greek was those, those years ago before he moved to the Cheese about two years ago. I think he was the top try scorer for them. One of the top try scorers actually in the Curry Cup. So he's not somebody that's a, a stranger to to the trial line. I'm going to top a beer here while we've got a bit of break and play. Nobody's telling me what they're drinking. I feel like I'm drinking alone. It's like that weird guy at the bar that's, you know, just sitting in the corner of the bar. He's just having brandies by himself. Nobody's sitting with him. No friends. He's loving life, but it does look a bit sad. That's kind of how I feel. So is anybody else been having a drink with me or am I literally just drinking by myself? Please let me know. hundred more just to be a man who walks it does sound pretty vibey open bloom i must admit it does sound like they're having a good time never watched a uh a, a rugby game at bloom ironically i've actually watched a footy game i watched uh Bufana beats oh penalty for the cheetahs wow this should be the lead for them it took a while for just when to decide which one of his arms he wanted to put up and it's against simon or try scorer last week uh, he does concede the penalty. Uh, high fives all around for the cheaters. They look to oh no, they're going to go for the corner. Well, that's an interesting decision. Right, Hugo Hiritz is on the Zamalek. Love to see it. And Christina Ostez is on the Budweiser. And uh, Stephen Van Spade just poured a glass of red wine. That's just the best on the coffee. Well, to be fair, it is a bit early down there. Uh, although you could join us for a beer, you know. I mean, old Rudy last weekend was doing the Super Rugby semi-finals, popping open a beer quarter past nine in the morning. That's the kind of dedication. We look for an our forever sports presented. Good lineup there from the Cheers. Victor Sega Kete uh, coming down with it. But I'm glad I'm not the only one having a having an alcoholic beverage. Cheetah's now looking. They're looking good as well. Yeah, looking for the Ronnie Moyer. Yeah. It's shift to the left. Renner Fortes come inside. They're just short as Monas van der Merwe. The question is, can they recycle this? The ball needs to come available, yeah. It's taking a while to come out here. Yeah. Yeah, the ball is available there for the cheaters. We are clear. Just short. Popped out. So we had to pick up and go. Pick up and go there once again. Clean up and move that just short as well. Oh, he's over. I looked over. We are clear. Rappertain is over. And there's no doubt about that. The first try of the match goes the way of the cheaters. This is Rappertain who opened the scoring last weekend against the Bulls with that charge down. 
um, of Jan Khursen. And the Chiefs, the home side, get the first try of the match. Renner Fortain, the try scorer. The pressure was coming. They decided to go for the corner. They thought they had the momentum. And it was a decision that has been vindicated with that try. On the half-hour mark, the Chiefs do go ahead once again. Good pressure, good pressure. And then as the players were being sucked and as the defense started to dwindle, Renner Fortain saw the opportunity, called for the ball, and uh, just really need to play. So, I mean, Andrew Cotter there was being shifted up by Francois Cairns, and then they just capitalized. It went, it's amazing how, as the defense realized they have to start to shift, that's when the ball gets used and they've got that opportunity. Uh, really good awareness there from the Cheaters. And they've got the first try of the game. Uh, Rudy's on uh, the Castle Lager. Cheaters champ saying, uh, Franco says, the top of seven where I am, AM, to be fair to him. I mean, I feel like I've had beers earlier than that, but you know, I mean, it is just a normal Saturday. Usually, that's festival vibes. Peter says, "SA born, are you playing in France? Watching all the way from here. Thanks, champ. Well, welcome, and hope things are going well in France. Uh, hope you got some World Cup tickets, and hopefully, you're ready for uh, the world to descend upon the French later this year as the box looks to try and defend their Rugby World Cup title. The the, the kick to come here from Ruan Pinot, and you get my timer sorted. That's well left, so it'll remain eleven points to six. But uh, first kick after Rion Pino missed in a while, actually. But yeah, you could just see, you saw the space. There's Chloe Jasper outside him as well. So it was always going to end one way. Right, 10 minutes to go in the, in the first half. And it's a five point lead at the moment for the Cheetahs. Well, this game really has ebbed and flowed, but the Pumas have yet to go in front. They've been sort of keeping up with the Cheetahs, but not really been able to um, to sort of assert themselves on it. Uh, it's a good take there from René Bernardo. Cheetahs just does hard 22. We're on Korea looking for a couple of options. Uh, Rian Korea will go to the boot yet on the right hand side. I imagine, but can't find touch. It's not going particularly far. This is going to be interesting. Uh, kick gets hung in the air very well. And I'll tell you what, as Etienne tell you, I was about to say, I thought that was a forward that took it. He does look like a forward, to be fair. It's a great take from him. Christmas, September. Oh, I bet to get a shooting a bit early. Does retreat well, though. Good awareness from the captain. Now, Christmas, September goes to tends to be a quick ball here. Imgajima going to Apollos. Apollos decides to put in the grammar in behind there. Puma Fura is backtracking. Great kick. Absolutely perfect kick there from Diego Polis. He's pinned the cheers back on the five meters line. He has found himself a contract, in fact, at the Sharks next season. Has Diego Polis. Very, very good player. Very keen to see what he does at the Sharks. Uh, Jan Fatonde is on the Bintuk draft on the banks of the Kunene River in Namibia. Oh, what I could do to be in a place like that. And Simon's saying apparently it's 4 420 times, so he's on the blunt. Well, fair enough. I mean, we all need our vices, don't we? Stephen Punter Space saying, Ruan Pino, like good red wine, getting better with age. I believe he's 39. He is, and he will be 40 by the time he retires. Has signed a year extension. They go over the top. Oh, he put him over. He's gifted the Pumas ball on the five meter line, straight in and out of the, the bread basket there. Knock on advantage, and the Pumas on the five meter line. Tends to be a, delaying the pass. They're the sign to cut back himself. Ooh, France by Pants, a good tackle coming on around Korea there. Pick up and go for Simon Ward. Advantage over here for the Pumas, but they are right in front of the, the pole. So any penalty advantage here, and they can take the points, the points get with themselves in two. Tears to be a chip over the top. A little cross kick, in fact. Quarter. Oh, the handling. And only in good is in the corner. That is what the Pumas are about. Tears to be a pulling the strings. In good with the finishing touches. Andrew Quarter with the awareness. The Pumas hit back. 11 points to 11. Kick to come. That is what we're here for. Rugby like that. Ali Ngajima, his third carry cup try. What a time to score it. But tears to bear the awareness. He realized there was so much space out wide there. It was a one-on-one -on -one year with Cohen Jasper, who does wrap up Andrew Carter, just popping up and the, oh, the wraparound from Ngajima. Literally down in the corner there. Brilliant work from him. And the Puma set back all square with the kick to come. The celebration there from Ngajima has been a good... Good season for him. You guys say I was a bit worried about your hiccup after the first sip. Uh, I have actually had hiccups the last couple of days. I don't know where it's come from, but 
Trust me, it wasn't from well, they are, we're, on, we're on the trusted line lager here, and 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 times are tough, so we're on the court vibe. Um, for me, there's no shame in buying courts. I used to, I used to even not want to buy them myself, but uh, needs must, and there's nothing better than a court. Uh, in terms of you know, you know you've got to make good, you're not going to make financial decisions. At the end of the day, if I want to be able to afford that Nike jersey, which is going to cost a lot of money, I need to be on the court life. So it is a line court in a black label glass, and um, that is what I am having now. I'm um, here, yeah, a couple of, couple of different beers out in the comments. It tends to be out on the right-hand side, and it's not going to come around. So the scores remain level. I'll tell you what, Pumas have been literally 3-3, 6-6, 11-11. So they're keeping up with the Chiefs. just haven't really got in front yet. They've got six minutes for half time to try and get themselves in front for the first time, though. Good try, though. Very, very good try. Andrew Cotter there goes to tends to be a tends to be it. He should have gone to the boot. He's now been caught a bit after a bit, and uh, now go Christmas September. We'll we'll probably uh, set a couple of racks. It does go to Dion Slabbit. Stephen Balakoma working hard in the tackle there. Christmas September just delaying things. He's got a blocker there. Probably will go to the box kick there. He does have tends to be a back and ready to receive if he needs. It does go back to tends to be a. In fact, it's Devin Williams there. Not a bad kick. Not a bad kick. This is interesting. Two new props on for the cheetah. Then this is very much planned. So Conrad from Furin, as well as uh, overseas wearing Polly, are going to make way. And uh, Aluto Taquin and Henkes and Baker on the park. So a bit of a bit of a Springbok sort of feel to it. We often see the Springbok front row placing themselves. Uh, just, uh, uh, you know, just for half the time. Good hands, good hands, Fima Fura. Today, your sender, it's until you're coming across here. It's a good tackle, but inside ball back to Fima Fura, who has been bundled into touch by the 22. Really good handling there from the Cheetahs. Good progression as well. They always seem to find that little bit of space on the outside. It was good tracking across there from it's until you to make sure that Daniel Cassender used to play as rugby actually. At uh, at the Pumas once upon a time. Made his move from the Greek words. I think it was last year, I think he did. But just, just good hands, good hands there. I think David Britt's that very nice little weighted pass, just sort of getting um the fur out on the outside there. Big Rony Moy coming up for the cheaters. They find a good a bit of momentum. Working hard on the two new props. And Hinkson Baker got penalty advantage as well. Ruan Clear is trying to use it, but they're still going. In fact, they're five meters out. In fact, they're still going. In fact, they're still going. Morris van der Merwe has he got grounding. It's available for Ruan Clear. Ruan Potato is desperately asking for it. Goes to Ruan Pinar. Long pass out to Mafura. Mafura to Cohen Jasper. Into the corner. Cohen Jasper is over. What a try. And the Chiefs once again hit back. I tell you, the Pumas, every single time they think they're back in the game, bang, the Chiefs come back and, and hit them again. Cohen Jasper this time, ran up for 10, identified the space. He was pleading for the ball. Couple of good passes, a nice long pass out towards Cohen Jasper. You can see he ran up for 10 once and just threw up Pino, long pass out wide on the angle from Fura to Cohen Jasper. Andrew Cotter's desperately trying to get across there. Never going to make it, unfortunately. Cohen Jasper into the corner. And uh, Rena Fortain, Ruan Pino, very instrumental in that one. Just identifying the space, calling for the ball nice and early as well. And the Chiefs now 16 points to 11. Two minutes to go into the half time. What a half rugby we've had. This is the problem with the people. They just can't get a grip in the game. They're kind of chasing the game the entire time. This is now what? 3, 6, 11. This is the fourth time they've, they've gone behind. And had to come back and be level. So it's been pretty, it's been the definition of toe to toe, but they've just not been able to get ahead of the game so far. Important kick this now for Ruan Pino, though. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Brilliant. That is 
Ruan Pino at his best, right up against the touchline, and he's absolutely nailed that everybody's decided that's enough. They're going to go get some beverages, going to get themselves to the front of the line, uh, the beer line, that is, before half time. We've got uh, two minutes to go before it is half time. Deep restart there down the left hand side. It's a really good take from Rene Bernardo. And this is management from Chile. The 18 points to 11 up. They've got the lead and uh, they'll be very happy with that lead, I think. Yeah, I thought about clearance either from Ruan Pinos, so the, I think generally they'll be quite happy with what's 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 transpired in this first half. Will the cheaters? There goes the halftime hooter. Pumas look, however, they won't have the final say in this first half, but a bit of a fumble there. Yeah, a bit of a set move, but they've not managed to capitalize. And the halftime whistle does go. So 18 points to 11. The Cheetahs leading the Pumas. Uh, what a first half that was. Very, very exciting stuff there. And uh, if, I'll tell you what, as long as we get the second half of that, I'm all in for it. Uh, let me know what you think of that half down in the comments below. We're going to take a very quick break. We'll be back very shortly. And uh, go get your beverages. Go and let me know what you're drinking. Go and get refills and stuff like that. Uh, um, I've got a, I've got a court that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, warming up on well, the warming up, cooling down rather in the fridge. So I'm going to be ready for the second half. Um, but let me know what you thought about that half. I tell you what, I think we're getting for a very interesting second half. The Pumas, as I said, they're a side that you've got to put away. So for example, that try is not enough for the cheaters. You know, the Pumas won't, won't look at that try and be upset. They'll sit there going, no, we're still in this game. They'll be quite, not, we wouldn't be happy. But they won't uh, count themselves or, um, out at all. So we will be back very shortly. In the meantime, we're going to look at a bit of a Springbok press conference. And you guys can find out what's going on over there. Um, smash like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys very shortly. Um, Skip, it's how, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Rehab is going well. Um, working, yeah, working hard. And it's great to be working in the team environment. I think it helps a lot with my... With my mental side as well just to see the work that's happening um i think if i wasn't here i would actually miss out on a on a lot that the, the group is doing and it's really good to do the rehab here because i've got guys that i can lean on like out here Andre and peter steph who i've been speaking a lot obviously they've done needs as well so yeah it's been really good and there's feelings of discomfort good morning uh, I'll stop. <laughs> no, I, I feel good. I feel good. Obviously, each day is different, but I take it day by day. But the nice thing is I've been here before. Um, I've, I've been through this. So um, I know I just got to take it, take each day, but I'm feeling good and confident that I'll be, I'll be fine. Okay. Sia, just um, on that, is there a feeling of deja vu? It's, it's back in Pretoria, back in the lead up to World Cup, back yeah. here, <laughs> it's like you've done this before. Yeah, 100%. And it, it sucks. It's not nice to be in this position, but the nice thing is I've been here before. And with the, with both uh, the Jack and Kev it's been, it's been good to, to feel uh, backed and supported like this. And, and, and the medical team is working really hard. But the nice thing is that I've been through it before. It's not like it's the first time I'm going through this. And there's other guys in the team who's been through the same thing as well, which is helping quite a lot. Coach Jock, um, just take us through last week. You guys uh, confirmed that you've taken two teams. Uh, it's now been a week since then. Have you 
Go on. Through your processes, obviously, have you you've got a better idea of what those two teams are going to entail and who you're going to take, or is it too far away still to say? No, I think I think we've got a pretty good idea uh, of, uh, but uh, on the one end we've got a pretty good idea, but on the other end there's still a lot of things that need to happen. Like uh, for instance, last week uh, uh, with with uh, Andre and with uh, Damian Williams uh, struggling with injuries. I mean, there there will still be issues like that. So I think we've got an idea what we would like to do, but it's too early still for us to say, listen, it's going to be these guys. Uh, so we, like, like we normally do, we, we will do uh, team selection like almost every day. If we had to go now, who do we take? So we, we, in our minds, we're pretty much aligned, uh, but, but it's, it, there's, there's still a lot of uh, time still to, before we can go, okay, listen, these guys are ready. When is the final decision going to be taken then? Um, yes, probably, probably I would say it's probably the week before Australia. We will have a pretty good idea of, listen, who has who has, who has, who has um, come back from injury, so who we can select. I think probably the week before Australia. Um, okay. So just uh, following up on that, uh, obviously your whole plan in the rugby championship is geared towards getting you guys prepared for the World Cup. It's, it's very sort of focused on yourselves. But um, it's an Australian team that, you know, no one really knows what to expect. Uh, new look side, new coach. It, is there kind of a bit of a thought that maybe you want to kind of get dominance over them from the get-go, as well as the temptation to go, you know, we want to make sure that we, we get on top of them at the start of their season as well? Yeah, I think we mentioned last week that it will not be an A and a B side. Uh, similar to what we did in 2019. I mean, I think in 2019, if you look at the team that played against Australia, Australia that started that game, I think a lot of people thought that that was an A and a B side. And, but Beast started against Australia. He, played, he started in the World Cup final. Bongi started against Australia. He started in the World Cup final. Lewitt and Evan started. Peter Steff started. So... I think in terms of that, a lot of people thought it's an A and a B side. We will probably do the same. It will not be an A and a B side. Uh, it will be a side that uh, we will believe is good enough to beat Australia um, here at Loftus. Um, and so, yeah, that, that, that will be our mindset in terms of that. And, and yeah, maybe on Australia, uh, um, yeah, like you rightly mentioned, they, they, there's lots of changes there. So I think that's probably one of the games where we will probably focus internally on us. Uh, and what we do, because I, I think it will be quite difficult for us to, to say, listen, is Australia going to have a Dave Rennie flavour or a Eddie Jones flavour? You know, not, we, we're not sure. So probably focusing on us will be the key. Um, John Klein has been cleared to join you. Yeah. When, when is he coming? No, John Klein is here. Yeah, he's in Cape, yeah. I was also in Cape. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. How is it different this time around? Obviously, a slightly different role for you, but you're defending champions now. There's a spotlight cast firmly on you guys. Is it very different, or is it a case of processes and keeping the approach the same? Uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the nice thing about this group, who's been together for a very long time, um, uh, is the fact that we're very realistic uh, and we, we don't often get drag into what people are saying or thinking that you know, we know realistically that uh, in 2019 isn't doing that. Uh, but yes, the, the expectations, definitely, uh, we feel that on our shoulders because uh, people expect from us to go and, and do it and we said we're going to try. Um, Rossi, also, uh, you know, we've taken advantage of the John Klein situation but the Pacific Island teams are having a bit of a ball there as well. Mm. Is that added a bit of an extra um, bit of bite to this World Cup? You know, Tonga have been um, filling their side up with uh, all black and Aussie, um, you know, sort of rejects. So do you think that's going to add even more to this? Yeah, to be honest with you, in the beginning, we did, we did vote against it. But now if you actually see what happens with Tongan team, you, you think it's so fair. You know, think, uh, you know it, it's fair for them to get guys who were born there and maybe played for another country and come back to Tonga. And, and when I look back at it, um, not because we got John Klein after that, it's actually uh, sometimes for those teams 
they were seen as some of the minors or the, the, the lesser favorites in a group. And now all of a sudden you've got these guys that are world class uh, and they don't just get together at the highest level at the World Cup. They were playing in really tough competitions earlier for other countries and in other competitions. Now, uh, I do think that sometimes having really weak teams in your pool doesn't help you a lot when you get into a quarterfinal and a semifinal. Well, if you do, because you have to still beat them now and Scotland and the other two teams in our pool. So uh, I'm, I'm actually glad that I know it's going to be tough and I'm, I'm not jamming them up at all. I just know of those names. If you start naming those names in that Tongan team, now. it's going to go on out of a match. But I think that, that that's correct. Uh, we like, we don't like to go down and go up and go down again. Throw, go up, up, up all of them. Hopefully, get to that quarterfinals and eventually the final. Thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon, gentlemen. I hope all is well. So, just talk us having, just talk us through having Alton back. I'm not sure what this question you asked, but just talk us through having Alton back in the camp and the selection dilemma in our pools because you've now got, yes, two tribes are nursing injuries, but you've now got four quarterfinals in the group to pick from, and you especially have to narrow the squad down to 33 for the World Cup. Yeah, I know. I think, <clears throat> like we mentioned last week, the, the uh, Alton. Oh, let me start like this. Uh, Elton is like all the other players, like a John Klein. Like we, uh, we, we, we follow or do road maps on players, probably 60, 70 players. And obviously with the two injuries that we had last week, we only had Marnie standing as a fly-off, you know. And, and Elton is, uh, how, how great is that to, to, to have the ability to fall back on an experienced guy like Elton, you know, who's, uh, I think he's close to 50 test matches and he's been in our environment. Uh, so it's nice to get him in in the mix uh, for the two injured guys. Uh, but um, uh, we can, yeah, you know, in, in in a week or two's time, we can have all four uh, flyers. But uh, Elton was, as you would probably think, he was probably our fourth choice uh, flyer. And again, I'm saying what a, what a, how lucky we are in terms of depth to to have a guy of his standard uh, um, as a fourth choice available to us. Uh, can I add to that? I think the benefit of that. Is a little bit uh, which we people don't always think about is that uh, there's no pressure on Andre to rush that injury now. There's no uh, pressure on Damien, who both will be very important for us leading into out of rack the championship, into the three warm up camps, going to the World Cup. You know, uh, with not having a fourth line here, you know, it's almost when are you going to be ready, guys? When are you going to be ready? How are you going to be ready, Andre? Now it's take your time, heal that thing properly. Uh, and I think just maybe to uh, update, I, I think there's a very good chance that Damien will be cleared next week, uh, which is great. But, you know, if we didn't have somebody, we almost would, should, would have been in a position to, because we almost like to force him. Uh, and, and this gives us the opportunity to let those guys sit the close slowly and be 100% ready when we select. John, just, um, you talked about roadmaps now. I mean, Elton is sort of like, um, the opposite of it, but just a guy like John. I mean, a lot of people wonder, you guys talk about your meticulous preparation in your roadmaps, you know, but is he the type of guy that's experienced enough that he doesn't perhaps need to need to have been like two years at alignment camps and that type of thing, you know, to actually grasp the system? Um, I think if you, th if you look at it, uh, um, John Klein is, uh, let's look at a player's point of view. Uh, he knows the majority of the players. He was with you guys at, at Stormer. So if you think he, he knows Eben Wall, he knows CL while he's played with him, Kitsi, Franz, Malerbe, Bongi. So he's been in. So from a, from a player perspective, I think him coming into the mix, it, it's, it's not. It's players that he know that he played with. They trust him. He trusts them. So I think in terms of that, from a player point of view, and then from our point of view, uh, we, we obviously coached him at the Stormers and we coached him at Munster. I see brought him over to Munster, so we coached him two years there. So I, th I think in terms of that, uh, we, 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 we know what we have in a guy like John Klein uh, uh, and what he can bring um, uh, to the Springboks. So, uh, yes, and yeah, we obviously, uh, um, and, uh, well, when we... When we, we we did roadmaps on him as well, you know, the moment the moment he wasn't selected or not selected for Ireland, he was constantly a guy that we had our eye on, and, and like all the other guys. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll put this question into one. First, can, can you just get your thoughts on on Derek being hospitalised and anyone wishes? Yeah. And just second, just talk us through the importance of the Curry Cup. I mean, three states are back in the in the final. 
we would have played in the 2004 final coach in the 2005 final. So the Curry Cup would have a very, very special place in your heart. I think it all, uh, maybe I was asked to answer the second question first. Now, I think the Curry Cup always folds up. Folds. Right, and we're ready to get going here. We have seven points. That is what the Pumas need to make up in the second half. Halftime score, 18 points to 11. The Pumas were playing right to left. The Cheetahs with a seven-point lead at the moment, having scored that try just for half time. Can the Pumas come back and make it back-to-back -back Curry Cup championships? Or will the Cheetahs get there first? Oh, and the Cheetahs have left the bounce as well. Good kickoff there. Christmas September coming away with the ball right up against the touchline. Does manage to stay in. Turn up ball off the kickoff. That's the, pretty much the perfect start, really, for the Pumas. But a big half ahead. It was pretty end-to-end -end in the first half. Really toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Cheetahs eventually managing to find themselves an established lead. Um, they've never led by more than four. And, I mean, more than five until that's a try. But now the Pumas all of a sudden on the front foot early in the second half here. Christmas September. And a couple of offside players there. Yep, that's a good uh, well played by uh, Christmas September. Delaying that pass, creating a penalty advantage now. Bit of a free roll of the dice. He goes to tends to be a tends to be a long pass out towards Inga Jima. He wants to come down the right hand side. He throws the ball out towards Andre for sure. Not too many options for him. He's just going to go straight into Rian Clear. He's eventually going to be brought down by uh, looks like uh, it's a Queeny and a Luto. That is penalty advantage. Here tends to be a quite the Mars the show. Go to front of Swal Clanans. Still a penalty advantage here for the Pumas. Crystal September, throwing the ball out, putting all Messi, and they'll go eventually go back for the penalty. Perfect. As I said, oh dear, my phone's busy falling down. Perfect start there for the Pumas, winning that penalty. And uh, the Cheetahs for them, now it's game management, isn't it? They've got a seven-point lead. Manage the game, but uh, that's not how you manage the game particularly well, to be fair. Uh, needs to do a bit better than that. Right, now the Pumas are going to go for the points here. Yeah, it's a seven-point lead, so this will be bringing it down to four points. So it's a good decision. Right, it tends to be a... Missed just the one so far. Oh, I must get my timer going. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. And that is over. Four-point game now. Good kick there from Tennis to Beer. The Pumas once again coming from behind. Trying to check the reel. And, and I said, what did I say at the beginning of the game? I said that it's... A Pumas are a side that you've got to put away. If you don't, if you leave them in the game, if you let them, if you give them an inch, they'll take it. So they're a side that you don't want within five points with 50 minutes to go because they've got that spot. They are a never-say-die team. Uh, so you're just asking for trouble if you don't put them away. Now, Tetsubia goes to his left boot, and that's the best clearance he's had in all, in, in the all game, really. He doesn't find touch, but he's pumped that pretty long. Now, Ruan Pino goes to the boots. To Pino Furo will chase this. Tends to be underneath. He's been pretty good under the high ball so far. That gets spilt a little bit, and eventually falls back to Tetsubia. He comes away with it. Good work there from the Pumas fly half. Does present it well to his scrum off as well. Corner three now, bashing it up. No uh, changes. Actually, no, Andre Rudolph was on the park as well is so far. So, interesting to see if he's on. I don't see, see about the corner. Chip over the head. And it's bounced pretty well as well for, for Andre for sheer. So, Puma's binding a couple of meters getting such a spot half time. Chris will, or halfway rather. Now, Devin Williams, not too many options. Goes to the boot, just hammers it down the left hand side there. Ruan Pino is there. Etienne Talyard, uh, pretty slow chase. And Ruan Pino's going to look for touch here. He was eyeing up that right hand touch line. Oh, jeepers, that is a phenomenal kick. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's found touch by about the 10-meter line. It's bounced just inside as well. That's a brilliant kick from uh, Ruan Pino. He's, I tell you what, it's a pleasure to watch him play rugby. It really is the moment. 122 points this season alone. One of the all-time great players, if you ask me. Had he not been moved to fly, but then you would have played 100 caps for, for the box. So now the Pumas just inside their own uh, half, about well, well, semi to line. Good line out there. September goes to the beer, goes straight to the boot. 
And he's turned, uh, he's looking at that for 22. He's looked, I tell you what. Anything you can do, I can do better. He's actually gone down. as a little bit sore as tennis to be here. 50-22 from his 10 meter line. That is absolutely brilliant from the Pumas fly half. And he's gone down in a lot of pain. So that's not a good look for them because he's been so instrumental for them all season. But take a look at this kick. And you can see he's going, he's going, he's going. And then he just feels something go. That's not a good look at all. It looks like it's his knee as well. And when there's no collision and there's nothing really that prompted it, that's where you get a little bit worried. So the other option off the bench for the Pumas would be um, Gene Willemser or Bian Vanico who can sort of slot in there. Devin Williams, I suppose, could, could play at full at fly if we need to be. But it'll be a Pumas lineup in the 22. And uh, he's back on his speed tiers to be up. I'll tell you what, if he's playing well, he'll play the full 80. No problem at all. They'll want him to stay on for as long as possible. And I'll tell you what, I'd love to see him in the URC. I, I've always been a big chance to be a fan. I always think that he's a he's a fly half that has everything he needs. His distribution is solid. He's got a very kicking age. He's not even that old. He's, he's 27 years old. He's, he's a little bit older than me by about six months. But for whatever reason, this hasn't had to really happen for him. But he's been, I mean, he's died. And I, I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of, a, sort of a whole team before us. But he's been one of the most instrumental players in the Pumas game there. He's really marshaled this Pumas team so well. I think there's a lot of URC sides who could benefit from having tennis to bear on their roster. Right, there we go. So uh, after the injury, I must reset my time because you know, we're back on bloody manual timing. I mean, manual timing in 2023. I mean, what, what's next? What is next? Russia's in a civil war. I'm having to do manual timing. What a bad weekend. Pretty good uh, run more than Peter Jacobs does go to September, goes to Talyard. Right, Pumas just inside the 22 year. You haven't found a bat, say thanks for the comments. You well, thank you for joining us. HCP saying, well, George Whitehead, yeah, I've also, I mean, I think George Whitehead, uh, look, he's, uh, he's getting, I mean, I think he's a bit older now these days but i think he's i mean george white is one of those sort of those classic curry cup players you know there were those certain ones um that just never quite made it at, at the top sides but they would just come to come to curry cup they were mr reliable all the time penalty though for the pumas in front of the poles this should be a one point game yeah it's, it's gonna come down to a kicking game yeah i'll tell you what i mean it's not as i said the the the, the biggest lead we've seen is that she have had a seven point lead that's that's the most we've seen any team have the Pumas have yet to lead uh so I do think it will come down to a kicking game in terms of the way they manage the game in terms of um um the game and stuff like that in terms of putting out the position stuff but discipline obviously is a huge thing when it comes to to finals I mean I think Chiefs this morning I mean Antonio Brown should have been should have been red carded cannot understand how he wasn't um but discipline, you know, now all of a sudden, you know, tennis to be an opportunity to make it a one point game. You is saying, good weekend, just have more beer until it gets better. Oh, we might, I mean, I will, I will. Um, going, going to meet up with some mates after this as well. So, have a couple of loggers. So, if you're out in town in Johannesburg later, hit me up. Might even see me around there. Tennis to be does raise the flags, makes it a one point game. Wild last saying, go Pumas back to the trophies. Yes, saying, we, we the Cheers have the bigger boot, though. Difficult to say, actually. Ruan Pino, I mean, he's kicked beautifully so far, but Tienes De Beer has matched him a lot. He's, he's missed one, really. But apart from that, he's kicked pretty well. So it's difficult to really separate the two sides. I mean, it's a one point game after 47 minutes, and it's literally been bling, 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 bling each time. In fact, I don't think either team, no. I think this is the, that's the first time, by the way. Actually, that is an interesting point. That is the first time. That, oh, it's just stolen from the ground off the cheetahs there brilliantly. Bit of a loose pass. David Britt's under a bit of pressure. But that is the first time, what I was saying, that's the first time a team has scored consecutively. Until then, it's been 1-1-1-1-1-1. That's the first time a team has gone back-to-back -back point scoring opportunities. 
back to back penalties, for example. Before then, it was 3 0, 3 3, 6 6, 11 11, um, 17, 18 11. Oh, that's an almost like half forward pass. Johnny Rudolph finds himself down that left hand uh, side. Strong carry from him. She's in for 22. Clear going to Renier Bernardo. Rian Korea goes to the left-hand side there. David Bridge trying to make a bit of an impact. It's been a very quiet game from the outside center. Korea now back to Fried Lodafia. Hands there for Henkes with Vag. Long pass out wide to Cassenda. He had Mafura out there. He does find Mafura. He's measuring up Etienne Talyard. Oh, Diego Apollos has had a big of a hit. He seems to be all right, but the way he's going down didn't look particularly happy. Good tackle there on Aluta Sequeni. The cheers just outside the 22. Moving to the left hand side. Let's go, Korea. Korea. Ruan Pino goes to Jasper. Jasper going to David Britz. Finding Everett's face. But David Britz pass out wide to. It was slightly forward, I think, and goes out to Jean Ray Rudolph. Rudolph does put his hands up. I do think he was slightly ahead of him. I think he, he had uh, stayed a little bit back. Oh, there's a classic Cheetah's jersey. That, that Vodacom one with the green over here. That, for me, is one of the most iconic Cheetah's jerseys. I don't know why, but. Um, Yeah, good stuff from the Chiefs. Literally going left to right, right to left, using the width of the field really, really well. Yeah, and you can just see John Ray Rudolph. I mean, it's behind him, but he was actually overrunning it. So if he had just stayed on the, on the, on the shoulder, I think that would have been absolutely fine. And uh, Peter Jacobs, not particularly happy taking a while. He's a bit sore. And uh, time is off, so I will stop my timer as well. And the timer is actually still on you. So they might have to remove it. They might have to adjust that. They might adjust that from the TV perspective because they did say the time was off. And they put it back on. So I'm just going to try and, and coordinate with the uh, time on the uh, screen. Well, it's a very weird lineup. It's eventually falling back to Andrew Cotter, who wasn't expecting it. That's a dreadful kick from him. And uh, all the people players have to wait for it to get offside. All of a sudden, that uh, Cheers have a ball. Kai Jasper throws it out to Pima Fura. Mafura wants to go himself. Good tackle from Andre. No, back slips the capital of uh, Andre Fashir. Good tackle from Pato Kans. Not a penalty advantage, though. So once again, Cheers should be able to uh, you know, lengthen their lead. Unless there's a knock-on advantage. But I don't think it is. I think it is a penalty advantage. Now they go to Simba Bailok Arma. So I think it's Kili Van Amerba that's made way for Jean-Marie Rudolph. Because I'm pretty sure Friedel Ullifield is still there. Mafura steps back inside. Interesting to see when George Cornier come on. Very, really, really rate that uh, youngster. Yeah, there's Friedel Ulfia. Ball comes loose. They're going to go back for a penalty for the Cheetahs. This, not sure this is kickable, though. Oh, it's getting a bit cold. I have to finish up and get the next one. Alvia say, love your commentary. Go cheers. Left from the free shirt. Thank you so much, Alvia. I hope you've subscribed. Well, I suppose if actually, yeah, if, you, if you're commenting, it means you have subscribed. Uh, yeah, if you are, guys, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. I mean, there are 27,500 of you out there. And when I say that we are planning ridiculous World Cup coverage, you've got no idea what we've got planned. In fact, I don't even know if you're ready for the announcement. Well, we're not ready for the announcement, to be fair. But um, huge World Cup coverage planned. Huge Rugby Championship coverage planned. So if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe and uh, come become part of the community because we're going to have a lot of fun in the next few months. Cheers on the five meter line. They have gone for the, the corner. It's a good line as well. John Ray Rudolph has got ball in hand. He's going to pass it back to Marshall from the moment. He actually drops it. But he's popped it up for real clear. Real clear. It's just short. No, he's not. He's over. Cheaters hit back. Bang, bang. That's what I'm saying. It's ebbed and flowed. No team has continuously started scoring points. Pumas go bang, bang, penalty. And the Cheetahs reply. Perfect reply with the try. Though. It's really clear. He deserves it. He's been so good in the last two weeks. Been really impressed by him. And Miles on the move. I mean, the ball actually, he actually dropped it, to be honest. And funny how that drop sort of prompted a, a, a defense to speed up. And all of a sudden, that pass out to Rian Korea. Bit of a high tackle. So, you know, probably would have been a penalty try anyway if he hadn't gotten over it from Francois Clarence. But he's over. He is over. The Cheetahs extend their lead by six points with the kick to come. Steve's going to get a beer. Are you guys drinking beer with me? Who is? Who's not? Let me know. Uh, give me two seconds because this, this is the nice thing. I'm not going to bar fridge. So watch this. 
I mean, this is cold, eh? When I say this is cold, this is like free state farm cold. You know that cold where like a free state farmer will walk out in his fairies, the shortest shorts known to mankind, then the largest jacket to known to mankind. That's how cold this uh, this beer is. I'm, I'm gonna finish it. Okay, I've got too much going on here. We want Pino. That's a great kick. That's a brilliant kick. He's out of the extras. Gonna finish this. I mean, uh, nicely. And then I'm hoping we get a bit of a tss from here. I'm gonna do it right by the mic as well. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ah, wasn't a great one. We'll take what we can get. 25 points to 17. Is my clock right? Yeah, man, pretty much. Right, one for the second beer. <clears throat> second court. Right, so cheers, 25 points to 17. Mafua underneath a bit of a pressure. Good, good uh, carry there and uh, solid restart there from the cheaters. That's not a bad pour, actually. I don't think that's too bad at all. Cheetah's busy trying to set up a ruck so they can uh, clear their lines. But as poor as poor as go, I think that's that's not bad. Eh? I think that's more or less the perfect beer. That's a dreadful kick, though. An absolutely dreadful kick from Ruan He did slip, to be fair. He did slip. His first real error of the game. Does allow the Cheetah to align in a good position, though. Okay, we've got no trackers. We might as well move the tracker. You just look at me. By the way... A shout out to Bitdefender, one of our new partners in the channel, who are part of, in fact, I can't do that because I don't have the scoreboard there. One of our new partners uh, of the channel, if you would like to get yourself the best, or one of the best cybersecurity um, protection out there, go and check out Bitdefender. They are making sure that nothing's going to go wrong with our coverage of the World Cup, the Rugby Championship, so much more. Line it over the top, that's not straight. Straight and narrow, though, that's what Bitdefender are. And uh, if you would like to get one of the best cybersecurity solutions on the market, check out the description. A big shout out to Bitdefender who are supporting the channel. And please do go and support them because it is thanks to our channel partners that we can uh, bring you this sort of coverage. And um, Usually we have a mass track going which shows you all the, the way everything's happening. Unfortunately, with the Curry Cup being the Curry Cup, uh, they don't have the same sort of data advice. But, but, but rest assured, when this gets to the Rugby Championship, when this gets to the World Cup, Yo, you've got no idea the type of coverage we're bringing you. You guys are not ready. I'm actually not even sure I'm ready. Who are ready, though, are the scrum here on the 22. It is Cheetah's ball. We had clear with ball in hand. Uh, a lot of people jumping in the comments saying, Go Cheetah, step in front of space, saying, I like beer, but it's cold. Red wine works a little bit for me in winter. Yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, you know, brandy's usually, brandy and rum is what warms up, warms up the chest here. Uh, we actually played a clear match last week and it was freezing and we had like a little bottle of rum and everybody had to have a bit of a sip before going on. It just warms the chest. Anyway, good scrum there. Ruan Pinar going to David Britz. David Britz going to Pinar Makura. To Cohen Yatba. Good, good take from him. It was slightly ahead of him. But he makes the thing. Tears to be as imploding the ref for a, a forward pass. Oh, that almost looked a bit forward to René Bernardo as well. A couple of 50-50 uh, passes there for the Cheers. Now Ruan Pinar goes all the way back to Ruan Pinar. Wants to bring up that uh, torpedo. Not his best kick, a little uh, set up just ahead of Devin Williams, who dummies one, then goes to the boot. There's no one really chasing. Andrew Cotter eventually puts the hammer down, does get there to Prima Fura. And uh, Diego Polis has to release. Like his last game for the, for the Pumas, for he will make his move to the Sharks. Diego Polis, very, very good player. If you're a Sharks fan and you haven't watched a lot, a lot of him, get excited because I really rate him. I think he's a top, top player. Um, is Diego Polis. Now a bit of a kick uh, battle between the two teams here. Now Ruan Pino goes to the boot once again. Lifts it high in the air. I think it's Andrew Cotter underneath it. And a bit of pressure. They can't free his hands. But for a very, very good kick chase. I mean, what a revelation he's been at, uh, at fullback this season. Goes back to Tennis De Beer. He goes to the boots. Can't find touch. So it'll be just inside. Cohen Jasper goes inside to Ruan Pinar. Goes back to Cohen Jasper and says, you know what, go for a run, youngster. Everyone's a youngster when it comes to Ruan Pinar. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Ruan Gita does when he's actually younger than Ruan Pinar. 
The loose start queen, you're trying to bring the big carry. They all uh, somebody's got their hands on the ball. Yeah, great stuff, great stuff. And it's PJ Jacobs, brilliant. Getting you in a good position over the ball. M big mitts there. One of matches as, as a hooker. And uh, a very good penalty being won there. We've almost got tw we've got just about 20 minutes to go until uh, the full time. So still plenty of time for the Pumas to come back. Jan Muller says, having a cold one with you, smoking a lacquer piece of beef. Oh, that sounds very nice. Can I come? Drop an invite. Drop, an, drop, drop, drop a young location. And we'll descend and, uh, and, and have a bite. James saying, Etienne number 11, Pumas, Bloemfontein boy. Uh, Neil saying, go cheers. Thanks for keeping us updated. Sitting in Greece with no way to watch the game. Beers are cold though. Well, you know what? You're sitting in Greece. The beers are cold. You can still see a live score. I don't think life gets much better than that, to be honest. Greece is on my bucket list to go to. I need to get out of this country. Like, far it. For, you know, this, this before anybody starts suggesting anything. I'm not immigrating yet. I mean, I've got solar, so at least, <laughs> at least that is not a thing. But I need to get out of this country and get, and get exploring. You know, I have big plans on traveling before COVID. And since then, we've just been down here. Although, having said that, I need to get around the country a bit more. Uh, got a couple of subs here. So it looks like Vien van is coming on as well as Gio van Sleeman. So Chris Wolf September will make way. Interesting to see who Vien van is coming on for. It looks like Andrew Cotter is going to make way. And obviously Chris Wolf September will make way for Gio van Sleeman. Yeah, and Greece now must be absolutely pumping. Right, so uh, time is off, so I'm just going to just sort that quickly. We are a little bit, uh, my clock's about a minute ahead of uh, where Bloemfontein is actually at. Come on, time on, time on, time on. There we go, here we go. Now we're it goes to Quanta de Mars, the jeepers, he went blue up there. Good rolling more here from the Pumas, very good rolling more. Uh, pretty sure it's been collapsed. No, PJ Jax comes away with it. Surprise, the penalty advance there. Jeff and on goes. Oh, a couple of other subs here, by the way. Looks like a new front row for the Pumas because I think that that is, uh, that's Etienne Yannicko's come on. Devil Moritz as well. Bit of a fumble and the ball's gone down loose. Backwards now. Now I think it's gone forward. It will be turnover ball. Frustrating for the Pumas. It's a good opportunity there. I want to know, will you be my girl? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Hey, hey, baby. Ooh, ah, uh, I want, okay, I, one thing I will, can we just give a shout out to the Bloemfontein Stadium DJ? Because usually the songs are dreadful. Usually you've got Sweet Caroline blaring out like 52 times. That is dreadful. Man's had the tracks on lockdown. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Maybe we should, I mean, we would accept that we get taken down. But imagine we could have some tracks going. I'll tell you what, the, the, the lager is flowing down in Bloemfontein. I'm looking at some of the dance moves here. They're a little bit questionable, but uh, we'll forgive them because the lagers have been flowing since probably about 7 in the morning. Ooh. Ah. Oh, can you be my girl? Is he getting ready for my rave later? Uh dear. Neil saying, pumping up, uh, pumping my brew uh, for the cheaters. Ah, uh, so on the Aperol's. Recommended trip here for sure. Yeah, it's on the bucket list. Uh, George Cornier is on, by the way. He's on the side of the scrum over there. Uh, looks like he has replaced Sibabalo Oma. So um, uh, it looks like, yeah, free So that's actually, you actually got three number eights in the field, to be honest. Uh, free kick there for the cheaters. Interesting. If I was them. I will just tap this and just hammer it downfield. Jan saying all the way from Ermelo. Well, actually, my cousins went to Ermelo. Funny, fun, fun fact. Um, so I've actually watched them play rugby a few times. Bit of a weird thing, but eh? And uh, the European has lifted it high in there. Quanta de Mars has done that. I tell you what, this man, if he had the pace, not that he's slow, he could very well be a backline player with the skill set he's got. Such a good skill set. This Quanta de Mars, a very nice player. Loves to carry the ball, but just doesn't drop it often. Very good under the high ball. Took a very good catch last week. Anyway, the Pumas do have the ball. Jeff and Sneeman is going to roll this back and go to the box kick. He lifts it high in the air. There's a strong chase there from Francois Clayton. 
We want Pion a bit of pressure. Gives it away to Koen Jasper. Koen Jasper had a lot of pressure. Pion Van Niekirk is behind the side of the bottom of the rack. It's got to be a penalty for not running away. It is a penalty for not running away. Do I lie? Do I lie? Yeah, Francois Kleiner is just completely uh, stuck in that situation. Not managing to roll at all. But what I was saying is that stadium DJs are very underrated. Those two have been around. Well, Ruan Pino is very upset about something. Kerlin Jasper is receiving a bit of treatment. Jed getting himself strapped up. Sia Masuku and Robert Everson have come on. So is Ruan Pino bleak? Because no, he's still on the field. So Sia Masuku must be coming on at. Um, at full back, I'd imagine. If he has come back on. Uh, that's what I would do. I'd take off Prima Fura and put him in at, uh, at, at full back. Masuku, I want to play. He is. I'm very excited to see what he does at the Sharks. Anyway, Cheetahs have progressed quite far. I feel in the 10 meter line. Good line as well. And uh, that's Lupin the best days, by the way. He put that ball in. He's come onto the park as well. Robert Jasper, he's, he's beaten one. Chip over the top. That's a great, great, great take from Andrew Cotter, who I actually thought had gone off. So maybe it was Inga Jima who actually had made way. Um, Andrew Cotter there had been turned, and then he returned and, and, and marked. So that's really good work from him. And he's now uh, found touch. He's in touch found as well between the 10 and the 22. Yeah, good, good, good tracking back there from uh, Andrew Cotter. Uh, come on, let's hear you sing the Cheetah song. Well, first of all, I'm a line supporter, so I can't be doing such things. I mean, that's that's borderline blasphemy. Uh, Porf moves on for Shane Kirkwood. That's the that's the captain that's made way. Good uh, good innings, good innings from the Pumas captain. Uh, Alvin, uh, saying, "Great Cheetahs are underrated. Score looks great. Go Cheetahs, go!" Right, so the Cheetahs with the line hopping between the team and the fifty meter line. George Pinet goes up. I will tell you what, he went almost up too high. John De Rudolph's come away with it, and he throws it. And Nuran Pinot's not had it. He goes to the right-hand side, spotting a bit of space there, searching for that, uh, that touch final. Devin Williams right up against the touchline, hammers it back downfield towards Ruan Pino. In fact, it's fallen to Fia Mafua, so uh, Masuku and Iverson not on. There was, there was talk about them potentially coming on. Oh, it's, it's bottled up, and it's come away to Etienne Talyard. Be very little of Etienne Talyard. Now it's Diego Pollard. Again, where's, where's, where's the Pollard's been? Man, I mean, I tell you what, that guy, I mean, especially in the first couple of weeks of Super Rugby. In fact, I reckon he was signed by the Sharks based on about three performances, one of them against the Bulls. Penalty advantage here for the Pumas, and they do get the penalty for offside. Um, but literally, I think he had a three-week period where he basically just earned himself a Sharks contract based on about three games because he was that good. Rory Sullivan saying, could the load shedding for rugby rules come on the Pumas? Yeah, well, glad we can uh, bring you guys some coverage during load shedding. Um... Yeah, we've got all the load shedding solutions. So we're always down. You know, load shedding means nothing to us. We will always make sure that uh, whatever we say we're going to cover, we will cover. Come rain or sunshine. Yeah, it's offside there from the cheaters. Right, so we... I need to, start, I need to get this beer. I need to finish this beer by the end of the game. And I've got 17 minutes to finish. Eesh. Ooh. That's cold. That's nice. And it's cold though, but it's nice. I mean, you can never, you're can you never going to complain about cold beer, are you? Mm. I wonder what I'm going to be like when the Lions eventually get to a final. I've never commentated a Springbok final because I haven't done this since the last World Cup. I've never, so, so that British and Irish Lions third test is probably the biggest, most important game I've had. But all the finals I've commentated, I've been the neutral when do I get to support my team in a final? Pumas on the just outside the 22, by the way. Remember that a convert to try for them would still leave them a point short, but would bring them within a penalty. Um, I reckon that I'd actually be, I'd actually be useless. I reckon if the box get to the, the the World Cup final this year, I'll, I'll be hopeless. I'll be I'll be too invested. 
I'll be busy shouting and swearing. People are like, what's going on? And I'll be like, I don't care. I'm just saying, like, shit's going down. Um, so one day I'll commentate my team in a final when the Lions just jack their shit up. Uh, a couple of good strong carries here from the Pumas, but that's a bit isolated. Still uh, possession. What would be interesting now, if they've got a penalty in what they decide to do. With 15 minutes left, I would think about the three points, get themselves within a try. And then Paul Fu's first carry of the day. Not really getting much uh, go for it. Boy, are the Pumas now. Uh, Francois Clenans, or Frana, as they call him. Had a very good semi-final last week. Top the tackle charge. Here's the beer. Not too many options. Goes himself. Jim and Slamman now going down the left-hand side. And it's Dion Slabbit. Again, not making too many yards. In fact, they've actually lost a few meters. Oh, Kornet Reed. That's a very nice angle that he's run. He's got himself into the 22. And John Ray Rudolph has taken the opportunity. He's gotten over that pull. Look at him smiling and laughing. He's won a breakdown penalty. Brilliant work from John Ray Rudolph. Big moment in the game because you felt that the Pumas had a bit of momentum for a change. Uh, big welcome to Yolandi, who is the latest member to the Fair Sports Members Club. If you would like to support the channel, please do consider becoming a member. And uh, Albia, thank you so much for the super thanks. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, shout out to all our members. Super thanks, super chats, people that subscribe, all of you people who power this channel. Um, at the end of the day, we can only do what we do with your support. Otherwise, I have to go get a real job. And who wants to do that? Like, no, boo, who wants to go work in an office? Well, this is my office, to be fair. But, uh, yeah, I'd far rather chat shit with you guys on the weekend than go and get, like, a, a, a real job. So, a big shout out to everybody who does support the channel and, and, and allows us to, to cover everything that we do. And yeah, uh, at the end of the day, everything you guys give to us goes straight back into the channel. So all your support just hopefully makes this coverage better. That's why from two years ago, we've now got the tracker, which usually does work. We've got better scoreboards, we've got better studios, better quality cameras. It all goes back into the into the channel. So a big shout out to everybody who does support the channel. Like our partners, Bit Defenders. So that's why we want you to support them, because then they'll support us and everything just gets better. So the Pumas are now on the back foot here. The Cheetahs are. Looking to more, they just out the 22, not really going much forward. Um, but Rian Creator is desperately trying to get the ball out. He does get the ball out, goes to Ron Pino, he goes to David Brits, goes to Daniel Cassander, who's just dropped the ball. I mean, that's like watching the under 14s on a Saturday morning. No reason whatsoever to drop that ball, Mr. Daniel Cassander. But at the end of the day, you do have an eight point lead, so people won't chastise you just yet. Keep doing it though, and people might not be particularly happy. Good player though, Daniel Cassander. Interesting move for him from, to move from the Greek was uh, to to the Cheetahs. Hey, we've got a Guija going. Who would have thought that there would have been a Cheetahs Guija? I need to get involved with the Guija squad. I was actually chatting to the buggers. Get them involved. A little chip and chase here from Tennis to be a good covering there from George Cornier. Very athletic. Very good to see him back in the country. Also moving to the Sharks. Interesting to see how much game time he'll get down in Durban next weekend. Rian Kriya does go to Henkins van Veik, who is hit very hard in the tackle. Good defense there from the Pumas. But they need ball at the end of the day. They need ball in hand yet. They want to try and make a bit of a comeback here. They throw the ball out towards... Uh, as Daniel Martin has come onto the to the park. It's interesting because the, the Cheetahs have got a 6-2 split with no scum off on the bench because of Ruan Pino. Ruan Kriya. And yet both Ruan Kriya and Ruan Pino will probably play the full, the full 80. Now they're going on the left-hand side. And Mafura starts to go himself. Diego Apollos have been turned, but does uh, get back into a good position. Rian Kriya now going pretty flat. Back to Ruan Pina. Back towards Ruan Fontaine. He's going to go to the boot. Goes to the grubber bird. And uh, Tens de Beer is there. He's back. He's been turned. Good pickup from Tens de Beer. Under a lot of pressure. Looking for options. And does get... You see, he just didn't have any support there to Tears to be. He did very, very well, but there wasn't any support. Trying to root off, getting a little bit over-eager there. That's a Cheers Away jersey. That's not something you see, hey, a Cheers Away jersey. That, that old green jersey, which never made sense. Why the hell would you have a green jersey? Your home color is white and orange. 
your wear kit is orange. Nobody has anything in between that. So why was there ever a green jersey that was made? I mean, I remember they used to have the green over here, which was quite cool. As I was saying earlier, that was kind of the iconic jersey I remembered. But that whole green jersey was very odd. Good take there from Victor Sick. to Mr. Captain, fantastic. Inside ball, Daniel Kassender. He's been hammered, but he's managed to bounce away from that tackle. In fact, he's found a few yards there. Rian Kriya, thought about the offload. Now he's dropped it. Hmm, might have been forward there, if we've been... Brutally honest, yeah, but it has come back. Rana Fontaine has come and decided he's going to be a scrum off for a bit. I need to get onto this bear. I've got flipping 11 minutes and I've got a draft and a court and a whole works to try and get through here. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, what do we care about more? Steve's uh, consumption and whether he can get through this or the game? Probably the game, to be fair, but it's a close second. David Britt's now on the outside. Diego Pollis doesn't manage to bring him down. Cheers up to the 22. Rian Kriya back on the inside. Rian Kriya going flat to Louis van der Beste. And good tackle on him. Rian Kriya now going down the left-hand side. David Britz, who made the call. Which was the right option, but uh, they still have ball here. Rian Kriya now going to the right. Aluto Sakoyeni. Good tackle on him as well. And Andre Fashir trying to get his, his hands on the ball. Now it goes to Rian Pinar. Firing out. Long pass out from Rian Fortain towards David Cassini. He's trying to measure up Etienne Talyard. And Etienne Talyard is up for the toss. That must be out. Very, very good work from Etienne Talyard. George Grenier thought about a bit of uh, afters and then realized that he's uh, no need for that aggression. Time off. Time off. No, actually, it's actually good work there by Etienne Talyard. Wasn't going to let him go away from him. Yeah, I'd say that Chiefs are almost there, to be honest. Very, very... It will be a Puma's line-out, and they have made a change of hooker. So Peter Jakes has gone off, so... Um, uh, Donald Osegre is on to the park with his dreads. Got a bit of a Mohawk-type dreads going there. So just uh, Gene Willems, who hasn't come on for the Pumas. Good line out there. A few right under the high ball there. He throws it back to Daniel Kassin. He's all of a sudden very involved. It's a more though, so this could be turning over ball here. And we'll be turning out. Very good work there from the Pumas. Very, very good work there. Just managed to hold him up, create the more... Turnover ball here from the Pumas. If they go into the last 10 minutes here, things are starting to get a little bit frantic. The problem is the Pumas need more than a convert to try. If they're within seven, I would say bet against the Pumas, you know, at your at your own peril. But uh, with an eight-point lead, every minute that ticks by is a minute uh, you know closer to winning that title. And yeah, look. You know, as 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 Springbok fans, you know there is that 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 mo that, that mojo that uh, that that mooty that when the cheaters win the Curry Cup, we win World Cups. So you know, let's throw it out there to the universe, shall we? Also, if like like forty three of you guys could subscribe, so we can get twenty seven thousand seven hundred, that would be like a nice like you know milestone. We're gonna get to thirty thousand by the end of uh, the first two Springbok games. I'm not too worried. Penalty now for the Pumas, but yeah, it will be nice to start ticking off a couple of subscriber milestones. Uh, thirty thousand by before the World Cup, thirty two thousand I reckon before the World Cup would be nice. Maybe thirty five if we can do that. After the World Cup, who knows? Could be at fifty thousand subscribers by the end of the year. That would be absolutely mental, by the way, if we did that. Uh, Hink has been baked there, penalised. So Tienes de Beer is going to be able to put the Pumas back inside Chia's territory with a line-out. And just when I was making progress, I'm going to reflow. I might have to end up like just slotting this later. Because I'm an athlete at the end of the day. So, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know what relevance it has. It just means I'm drinking. I'm, I'm trying to justify myself drinking a bit slow because, you know, as you can see, I'm, I'm very athletic. In fact, the Springboks need a very tall 
not so uh what's the word um I don't know, you know not so tall not I mean, tall but not so it'll come to me fly hop i'm ready there's a fly hop back in my day people you might not believe me well actually to be fair i just play eight man at, at varsity because they took one look at me and said unlucks you know you're 100 kgs and you're and you and you're six foot two slash three you're not playing at fly hop but anyway the pumas uh mall has uh, come down here so it is available for that no turn over ball in fact that's very surprising you very rarely see a mall legally start brought down and turned over one that's taken so long to go down so that's a big moment in the game in fact it's early to say, but that could have been the moment that the Pumas needed uh, to try and win this game, and they might have just missed out on this. Ooh, what shape have we got going now? That just sounds like a jaw. I think next year I'm going to cancel cancel all my raids. We're just going to go to the go to the go to the Free State Stadium. Mister DJ has been on point. And, and I tell you what, a good stadium DJ makes a big difference, huh? Like, we need to bend Sweet Caroline. Are we all in favor of that, by the way? It's just me, or are we all just bending Sweet Caroline? Like, we're done with that. It is a cheetah scrum inside the own 22. They're about 20 meters up from the try line. Ryan Korea with ball in hand. He's been playing uh, the entire... Looks like he might go the distance, to be honest. There is no scrum off on the bench, so he will basically go to the distance, unless they bring on Siamasuku for Ruan Pino, or for Ruan Korea and put Ruan Pino at uh, scrum off. But I think they're very happy that Ruan Pino is sitting there. So the clear doesn't go find touch, but the big good chase. Now Damon Williams on the counter attack. George Grenier, but not releasing. Penalty for the Pumas. Yeah, I'm not supporting his body weight. George Grenier. I mean, please explain to me how George Grenier is what 20, 21, if that is. He, I think he's twenty, maybe twenty-two. He's twenty-one years old. Okay, turn 22 next week. Man is like gonna have no hair in like a week. Man is fully balding. And you go look at this photo, I gave him a trick, and he had a full set of hair, and now the man is fully balding, like nothing left. Like, what happened to the poor oak? Great player. I'm just saying, it's just oh, and there's the Guijo going. Yeah, man. Seems to be going for the points. This is an interesting. This is an interesting uh, decision, you, and I think it's the right decision. Actually, we, they, there's there's less than five minutes in the game, um, so they're going to go for the points here. This gets them within five, and now they're going to receive the kickoff and basically have four points to go and score a try. Good decision, I think, the right decision, but the Pumas need to play their socks off for the next four minutes. Oh, he's missed it. That's it. I think that could be the game. He's absolutely missed it. Dreadful kick. I think it was a slight slip as well. I don't want to make excuses, but he just just he just didn't strike that off well at all. Dreadful, dreadful kick from Chance to be here. Now the restart, this will be far. It is far. So the Pumas need to score a try with time for a kickoff. I'm not sure there's enough time yet. I think Cheetahs basically have one hand on the trophy. Uh, Jan saying, do you guys think Jimmy Stoddard will be a possible choice to the box? Or is Hawk going to be a concern? I'd love to see him involved in the URC team before. I, I do think that he's got a lot of potential as a coach. I think he, I think if I think if Harvey's for would leave, I think if I was Cheetahs, I'd be going all out for for uh, Jimmy Stoddard. But he just seems to be able to get the most out of a very... I don't want to say average squad. I don't want to be unfair to the players, but a very second rate, literally second rate in terms of other coaches not uh, really rating them. Uh, but to be fair, I mean, I think the Lions are a bit like that as well. So I think Jimmy Stonehouse might actually enjoy the Lions challenge. I'd just like to see him given a chance. Uh, and Paul Foot, no, sorry, it's quite a demise uh, but it's a very good tackle there by George Cunier, hammering him back. Two and a half minutes to go. Cheetahs, I think, basically have got this wrapped up. Bar a free try in the next minute and a half with time for kickoff. She just should be looking good to win the Carrie Cup. And then we all know what that means. She just won 2007. We won the World Cup. Now it's a scrum for the Cheetahs as well. Knock on. Everything seems to be falling in place. The Cheetahs 
fans erupt over in the Toyota Stadium. Two minutes left on the clock. I'm going to actually ask the poll here. Um, does the Curry Cup... I'm trying to think of how to word this. Does the Curry Cup still have the same prestige than before? Because I'm going to be... And the reason I ask this question is, as Cheetahs fans, do you go, oh, we won the Cup, but it's not the Curry Cup of old, for example. Or, or are we still sitting there going, no, nah, stuff that. This is the Curry Cup. It's still special. It's still important. Because there's a lot of negativity about the Curry Cup. But this final and the entire campaign, I really enjoyed so I want to find out if you guys, what do we think about the Curry Cup? Yes, maybe it's not what it was, and I'm going to say 20 years ago, to be honest, because 10, 15 years ago, it was still a a, a, a competition where the box were playing overseas things. It was never really the strongest teams during the group stages. Um, so I want to know, like, do we still rate it? Do we still enjoy it? As a, as a Cheetahs fan, do you put it like an asterisk thinking... We won the Curry Cup, but it's not quite the Curry Cup. Or are we still sitting there saying, nah, bugger that. It's, it's still the Curry Cup. It's a cool tournament to win. We're still, have, we're still very proud of winning it. I think players, I mean, you get that little you get that little mug, for example. And I think that that's a massive thing for you as a player. So I think it's just as important as it was. Look at all the phones are out. Everybody's got their torches on. Glad people have got battery for that. The KFC, oh, they've got the KFC. Oh, they've got the bucket hats up. Oh, I need, I need a bucket hat. Must have a cheers bucket hat. Right, time is back on. Crouch, bind, sit, sit. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. sorry that was, that was a little bit uh, huge scrum there from the humans. Massive. Has to be a penalty. Managed to get out. Johnny Rudolph. Ball over the top towards Cohen Jasper. Goes to the boot to Diego Polis. Throws it inside. It's in Talia. They can't afford to kick it. Got to keep this ball alive. I don't have time for us to do the Pumas. Corner three going to uh, Gene Valimsa. But they're so far back. They've got 90 seconds. There's not enough time yet. There's not enough time. The Cheetahs are carry cup. Penalty for the Pumas. They've got to take it quickly. No, Giovanni, you thought about the quick tap? You have to take the quick tap, mate. The cheetahs, know, the cheetahs on the bench, they know. They know. There's a minute left. There's not enough time. There's an eight-point gap. They've done it. I'm sorry, Giovanni Stamon. You actually didn't have enough time for that. I mean, I know the guys don't get taught mass, but you had to actually take that quickly and, and look for like a runaway try, drop kick, restart type thing. There's not enough time to set up a line-out now. There's, the, the time is off. Oh, the DJ's back on it. Oh, dude, the, the, the flames are going. This is like a vibe. Might have to just drive to Blom quickly. How much do you reckon the Uber will cost? Oh, good, good off. Ah, you know what? Pumas finished with a the flourish. There's literally, you can't win if there's 20 seconds left. It was a great final, to be fair. Is it a more? And they turned it over. There is turned over ball. A scrum, and this will be it. The Cheetahs have done it. They have won it. They have won it. Not officially yet, but the Cheetahs have done it. There are seven seconds. They've literally just got to get through the scrum. Kick it out. Doesn't matter what happens. They cannot lose it from here. They have won the Curry Cup. Ruan Pino has won the Curry Cup once again. Shout out to the Pumas. They've been brilliant all season. They proved that last season was not a fluke. That they are a side that needs to be taken seriously. They are a side that are adding a lot of value as a part of the the whole sort of funnel you know the pipeline of SA rugby the Pumas are proving that they're part of that an important part of that but they just didn't have enough to get past the Chiefs who have been the best team the entire tournament and hopefully this kind of win will hope them hopefully bring some more players to them maybe sort of add a bit of depth and they can be a bit more competitive if they are included in the challenge cup which has actually not been confirmed so Rua Pino's down at scrum off he's gonna have the honors Sia is on for Rian Clear.
Her daughter's asleep. She's ready to draw. She's going to go drop the daughter at home. You can just see. She's going to go there, just toss the daughter on the bed, say, you'll be fine, and she's off to the club. Okay, 100 votes, people. And uh, most of you guys still saying that they're still the prestige. John's saying, it feels like a tier 2 competition because of the stars being missing, but the history of it will always keep its status as a beautiful competition. I think that's a fair chat. You know, it's not going to be what it was once upon a time. But to be fair, I don't think I, I don't think it's like a new thing. Even during the Super Rugby era, this was never a competition where the best players were playing. And that's been the case for the last 15 years. But the oldest competition in the world is always going to mean something. To Ruan Pino. And he bangs it. And they've won it. They go, look at what it means to Ruan Pino. They flow it to him. The Cheetahs winning. 25 points to 17. What a match. What a competition. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. The domestic season is done. It is finished. Next up, the international season. But for now, Bloemfontein will pump. Tonight, it will pump. It will absolutely pump. If you know any bars in Bloemfontein, if you're in the area, go there. You're going to have a great time. To the Cheetahs fans, congratulations. What a game. What a tournament. What a season. What a win. To the Pumas fans, hold your heads up very high because that was a great campaign. It was a great final. To you people, it's been a great stream. Thank you for keeping me company. It took a while for you guys to get going, but after we started cooking, we've been cooking. Um, so a massive thank you for joining me on tonight. We will see you guys very soon. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching.